Good evening, party people, or should I say potentially adventurers, perhaps? Welcome back to the bar, or perhaps the tavern, per se, or the table, depending on where you choose to play out your role-playing fantasies and stuff. My name is Cameron, and welcome back to... I think I already said the bar. Or the tavern, with an X. With, as long as it has an X in there, I, I have absolutely no qualms with what you call this place, or me, I suppose. Although my name is not Xavier. I think that is probably the notable exception there. That's that's just not my name. Although I always imagined me a really cool name to have, which is, which is kind of why I put the X in my name arbitrarily. But let's just say, for all intents and purposes, that Cameron, spelled with an X, is indeed my real name, and it's all a part of a fantasy campaign, perhaps run in Pathfinder, or perhaps in your favorite tabletop setting. Tonight, we rel we we realm we dive into the realms of the fantastical, the magical, the whimsical, the mystic. Once upon a time, I went to a board game convention. I've actually gone twice now. It's called Gen Con, and it takes place in Indianapolis. And it's a wonderful, it's a really, really big board game, card game convention thing. It, it's, it's amazing. The first year that we went, it was kind of like during like the end-ish of like COVID times and whatnot. So it wasn't as big as it was like anticipated to be. But this year when we were- restricted. It was restricted, yeah, because they, they didn't have enough, they weren't allowed to have a lot of people. They were having participants so that they wouldn't have too many people there and so that more people would feel comfortable. This is very fair. It says my dearest fiance at Disney Queen. Her name is Disney Queen for the purposes of this campaign, uh, who is uh, hanging in the corner. She was working on some sewing stuff earlier. It's looking pretty cool so far. But in any case, we went to Gen Con again this year, and although we didn't get a chance to experience all of what Gen Con has to offer, supposedly there's an entire football stadium filled with just a, a, a library of board games that you can just pick up, play, sit down next to some rando who you've never met before, and I don't know, challenge them to a game of Splendor, or Tetris Link, or a game of D&D, or I'm trying to look over at the board game collection let's say nemesis it's a very big box sitting on top of the record player right now whatever game you could possibly imagine in any case while we were over at gen con i picked up a book for myself it was not this hulking pathfinder second edition uh rule book which i hope to run one day um but just i just don't have the balls to do it i just i'm, I'm a nervous wreck sometimes i picked up this book it's called Mystic Libations, because I was, as I was walking around the various different stands and vendors that they have, I came across the stand for a place called Tea and Absinthe, which I have their business card for, because they're lovely, because during the previous year, I had found Tea and Absinthe because they were advertising Tea and Absinthe, and I was like, well, I don't know what kind of combination that is. I don't know if it's appetizing or anything, but I do like tea, and I had been on the search for Laps and Suchong tea at the time, which for some reason every place I went to was out of. They were also out of it as well. But they do like themed teas and stuff for Avatar The Last Airbender. I saw a Steven Universe one, various different... Um, video game characters there we actually picked up it was like uh it was limited because they were running out of a particular one of the i think they were running out of the earth themed tea uh we got the four elements the fire earth wind and fire earth, whoa and water that's the other one i'm pretty sure yeah that was the one um but we got the four the set of four the the avatars blend or something it wasn't all of them together but there was one for each element and i haven't actually tried any of them yet but tea and absinthe they don't do they don't deal in absinthe at least not to my knowledge i don't think they are actually a purveyor of different types of spirits and stuff however i didn't notice when i was there uh, the last time but i found this time that they had a book there called mystic libations and they had a couple of different cocktail books there but this one caught my eye because it honestly looked like it could have been like almost like a, a particular type of like like tabletop gaming set. I'm not big on, I, I don't know too many about all the different rule sets that are out there, but essentially if you can assign rules to your state of being and how you move around in the world, perhaps how you interact with the world around you, then you basically have your own tabletop role playing setting. And although this isn't a complete guide or anything like that, it's mostly just a cocktail book. But it's also got some cool things in the back as well. And I decided to take it upon myself to go into the book, trying to peruse around a little bit. I'm trying to do a little uh, a little something different. Like, not that it makes any sense to explain here because it's all behind the scenes stuff, but usually what I wind up doing is I, I'm a very, um, I'm a very go with the flow kind of person, very spontaneous. I will literally not plan anything until just about the last moment, but I've been inspired. I've been inspired to plan just a little bit more. So I planned this instead of last night, two days ago, because I actually went to a concert last night. If you've ever heard of NSP, Ninja Sex Party, they had a wonderful show in Glenside, Pennsylvania the other day. It was just lovely. I love Daniel Abed on, he's a wonderful guy. Aaron's pretty cool. Brian Wecht, also a nice guy. Jim Roach, and then there was Steve. 
and Sam, whose name's escaped, whose last name has escaped me from the Super Guitar Brothers. It was really, really cool, and I got this really awesome T-shirt, and it made me really, really happy. And now we're here on Wednesday, not the Tuesday that I saw them, and I'm a little bit farther down on the hype train, but we've got cocktails to make, so we might as well enjoy ourselves. So in Mystic Libations, there's, I don't even know how many different cocktails that there are in here, but they're all, they're all drawn absolutely beautifully. Let me, let me do a little, give this book some credit that it deserves. I'll zoom in a little bit, get some, get a piece of this awesome illustration action. I don't exactly know who the illustrations were done by. Um, I don't know, but it's by Brandon Clayla, Tad Stashwick, forward by Satine, Satine, Satine? Phoenix, and a preface by Jason Sorrell. And this is a beautiful little book here. It's got um, illustrations for all the different cocktails inside. I'm gonna try to do this without, with the hands that I have available. If you can catch a glimpse of some of the, co some of the cocktails in there, there's a couple of them. No, oh, it's not, not really working. Here's a random page. It's got some cocktails on it. Which ones? It's a ghosty one. It's not the one we're doing tonight, but various different ones as well. In the back of the book as well, there's also like really, really nice like illustrations between like some of the chapters in the books, like between the, I think there was a tequila, I think it was a tequila based drink section. There's a mocktail based section and they're separated by these really cool, like entire like two book long pages of arc. By book long, I mean, it's just two pages. It's two pages on either side. And they look really, really cool. In the back of the book, there's also a an entire index of the mystic libations that you can make which personally i'm a big fan of a book that decides to tell you everything that you've seen up until that point either through summaries or through indices and glossaries and what and whatnot or even like some extra information that you didn't necessarily know about it when you were mixing it half drunk after about halfway through your campaign of the night so far um and they also have in the back as well oh what is it Contributor bios. That's lovely. They got copyright stuff back there. That's great. The College of Arcane Mixology. They add your their own bard college back here for a bard who may be inspired by a cordial libation every once in a while. New magical items, additional mystic libations that are, I guess, in the game itself. I don't know if they have particular recipes associated with them although i see one here that says scorpion bowl and i know for a fact that the scorpion bowl whether it's a cocktail itself or not i'm not exactly sure but you do put a big ass cocktail inside of it and basically set it on fire it looks really cool i'd love to do that but i don't have a scorpion bowl but if i had one i might as well use it I also have a, I have a large, like, margarita glass, but that's, like, the closest I'll ever get to that one. Lelabe, what is this book? Just got here and heard magic items in Bard College? Oh, yes. It's called Mystic Libations, and it's got cocktails, mocktails of various different kinds, and it also has a new Bardic College in the back called the Bard, the College of... I just read what it was, and I already forgot it. Oh, they also have a map back here of the tavern that this takes place in, and I think that's Bloodthorn... Bloodthorn? Bloodthorn Tavern, I think, is the tavern that this whole book is kind of themed around. It's themed around the stories and adventures of the adventurers and curators who pass their way through the tavern. Um, it looks like there's a mystic ice cave back here. There's a pirate ship. There's what looks to be potentially a distillery on, spire, on fire. One hard night in Tila Komori, the second floor. Everything is on fire on that page. That's, that's awesome. And oh, well, I'd love to flip through the pages myself and show everybody everything that this has to offer, but if you want the full taste of the book, you're gonna have to go pick it up yourself, because I paid a pretty good penny for this one, and I'm happy about it. It was the College of the College of Arcane Mixology. They add an entire, um, it's like, it's like two pages, but it's a, it's a dense two pages. It's got a lot of information here, and it's just, it's so cool. It's got so much character to it, and this particular cocktail book was the one that had character. I think there were two other ones that I saw there. One was just kind of like, it was just like a general book that had nothing that was i think particularly themed to it um and then the other one was i want to say it was more like tv show related perhaps i'm not exactly sure but this one was DD related and to be perfectly honest it goes very very well with the geeky bartender book that i have which makes references to video games and books and other bits of nerdy culture and stuff but i already did an episode on that but there's so many more cocktails to do and i can't wait to go back to it at least some uh one day because they have a beautiful bar here we might as well use it and what better you way to use it than to use it as a tabletop table. Tabletop table? You can roll things on the tabletop. Roll for initiative. Natural 20. Dirty 20. Actually, Dirty 20 is one of the uh, the cocktails in this book. And I don't know exactly where it is. And I would go... I, I, would, I would slip through the entire book to find it. But... Oh, actually, this is a cool one. The Unarmed Punch. It's got straw... It's got rainbow sherbet in it. It's also a mocktail. It has pineapple juice, apple juice, passion fruit syrup, lemon juice... Orange juice, a scoop of rainbow sherbet, lemon lime soda. Fortunately, 
I don't have any passion fruit syrup, and I also don't have any rainbow sherbet, so I'm not making that one today. It's not a mocktail one. I like to think that we do all the mocktails and stuff on there, like in, in its own section, so that you don't have to like search between all the alcohol and stuff to find the stuff that you can like serve to your kids and stuff. It serves a purpose, compartmentalization. We like to keep things where they are. We're not keeping them apart because they don't like each other or anything. We keep it apart for the reference and ease ability of everybody else who's watching. In any case, I'm the kind of person who likes to play D&D. &D. I'm actually in, I think, at least... I'm in a campaign right now. I was going to say, I'm in at least one campaign. And, I, and you know you know who you are. If you're privy to that information, you know who you are. And I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday when we take our next session. But in any case, I've played D&D &D for, I think, the last... I don't think it's been 10 years yet. I think I definitely played my first game by the age of 16. So let's say it's about, been about eight years so far. I guess we're coming around on the decade in the next like year or so, but it's it's fun. I feel like I always always the kind of, like I always grew up in the, in the time where like, I felt almost insecure about my own nerdiness, about my own geekiness. I loved video games growing up. I went into college and was like, I have to put the video games behind me. I joined a fraternity and lo and behold, every single brother that I had was also extremely nerdy in their own special way. And I kind of was like, okay, well, I can play my video games again. It wasn't the Call of Duty Fortnite type stuff. It was a whole lot of Minecraft, which a lot of people were into and various other things here and there. Um, and I really didn't get back into gaming in general until, well, we started streaming about a year ago, which I thank everybody for because I kind of kind of wouldn't be relaxing the same way without all the feedback that's been given over the past year or so so thank you for helping me so i can help you make more cocktails and deal with the life around us perhaps not with the cocktails perhaps with a game of tabletop rpg who really knows in any case the first thing that you wind up doing when you enter in any sort of combat, at least in the 5th edition system and probably in Path for Under as well, is you have to roll for initiative. So I've got a little ranking system here. I haven't revealed exactly what the cocktails are yet, but there will be two cocktails this evening. One has the word dragon in it, and one is a word that I'm only guessing how to pronounce because I don't think it's an actual word and it might actually be like somebody's name or whatever. And the other one's gonna be me taking a shot. So we'll see who winds up winning and who gets to go first in the lineup. The first thing I'm gonna need is a, is a, is a D20, I guess. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into my bag here and whichever, oh, the first D20 that pops out. It's a, this is a D20 that I painted completely blue for my dearest Anna. I don't remember what the occasion was, probably an anniversary, and I made some, I just painted them all blue. I don't know why, it didn't really come out very well, and you really can't see any of the numbers on it, but believe you me, I will tell you what color, I will tell you what numbers I roll, and I don't cheat. I do not cheat in tabletop role-playing games, D&D &D or otherwise, because that's not fun for anybody. I can't be the main character of every single storyline. Come on, guys. Little Ed says, thank you, Cameron, for being such an amazing mixologist, gamer, and friend. You're welcome! And so long as I'm still breathing, hopefully we'll continue this shindig, which is why we have to hydrate. If you don't hydrate, you will dihydrate. And I hope to be able to continue saying that at least one time every single week, maybe for the next year. If I forget, that's on me. Don't worry about it. So, first, we're gonna be rolling for my initiative, and we're gonna see, I, I'd say I'm more of a, um, I wanna say I'm more of the rogue type, so I wanna say I have a very high dexterity, but honestly, I'm in front of a camera right now, center stage, so I'd say I'm more uh, towards the bard side of things. I'd say I have most of my points in my charisma, and let's just say I have a dex bonus of like one or two, depending on how well I roll, because I'd say that I'm still like, although I'm more bardic right now, I can be pretty quick on my feet if I wanna be, um, if somebody pops up behind me. Note, the more I drink, I don't have a very high constitution, the less speedy I get, and I'll probably have to take some debuffs uh, every once in a while. So what I rolled was a lovely four. So that's that's not looking very good. I might be going last in the lineup. I rolled a four. Let's say I get a plus two mod to that. Cameron's dex. Cameron's initiative. Me. CJ. That's me. I'm CJ. CJ rolled a four plus two equals six. That's my initiative this time around. We also do some math on the show. We do ratios and stuff. We do conversions. It's a thing that we do. Let's say cocktail actually let's reveal the cocktails now because uh, i kind of i need their names and they actually do have they're not dex bonuses per se i'm just flavoring it they actually have in this book they actually label each cocktail by a difficulty level so in the bottom right corner of each of these pages is a number that represents like how difficult it is whether that means how easy it is to find the ingredients how easy it is to like portray the drink whether you set it on fire or not crazy cocktail garnishes that you have to like spend hours and hours to bake pretty much as a separate recipe itself but they're scored that way so the first, well, the first cocktail that we're going to put into the lineup is one called Mavavian. Mathavian. M-A-T-H, math, 
A V I A N. I completely forgot I had math in the uh, in the title there. Um, I'll write it on the board eventually when we figure out what the what the order is. But the Methavian is has a difficulty level, and this is one through five, has a difficulty level of three. So I'd say that the Methavian gets a plus three bonus to their initiative. The Methavian rolled. Wow, that's a 19. That might be the that might be the first one we do tonight. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Nice job, Methavian. 19. Let's just put math on the board. Mathematics rolled 19 plus a deck plus a, an initiative bonus of three equals 22. That's looking pretty good if I do say so myself. The other cocktail that we have, um, I don't know if it's a higher, I don't know if it has a higher initiative bonus. It does, it's not, it's a plus three as well, but it's called Dragon's Bite. And it's actually, it's really cool. When we get to it, I'll put the page up to the camera. Um, it's like the glass itself looks like a, gra a dragon, like took a grab of like a glass and stuff and left an imprint. I have no idea how that works. The dragon's hands must've been like, like the claws must've been very, very hot or something. Otherwise you can't leave a mark in the glass without shattering it, you know? But the Dragon's Bite has a difficulty level of three, so we'll call it an initiative bonus of three, and the Dragon's Bite rolled a 10. 10 plus three is, you guessed it, 21, just kidding, Durgan, Dr. Agon, Dr. Agony, thank you, is 10 plus three makes 13. So it appears that we have our marching order. Uh, coming up first is... Dr. Agony, no, I'm just kidding. Mathematics, or Methavian. Methavian, with a score of 22. So the Methavian will be first. Math, my markers are running low. Come on, dude. Math. Math. Methavian. I probably could have planned this better by like, I don't know, making like a bunch of note cards or whatever. Methavian comes first, cocktail number one. Cocktail number two, which actually comes number two. Wow, actually, this is this is exactly the order that I wanted it to be in. I was hoping to take the the agonizing shot last. Now, don't worry. When I say agonizing shot, I don't I don't know exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be up to the the roll of the dice. If it's something one and terrible, then I'm probably going to shoot an egg or something like that. Um, and if it's twenty, then I might as well just make myself another cocktail that I'm going to enjoy for the rest of the evening afterwards. So let's see what whether it fits on my side or not. Coming in in marching order number two is Dr. Agony. Just kidding, it's Dragon's Bite. But then I love to imagine anything that starts with DR, you pronounce doctor. So we're like Dr. Agon, my university was Drexel, Dr. Exel. It's just, I don't know, it's funny, I think. Dragon's Bite, oh, dragons, dragons, <laughs> dragon's butt. And then coming in with the absolute lowest initiative bonus, which is me, is me taking a shot. What kind of shot? Who knows? I don't even know. The shot. Shot. Let's do a d20 shot. I'm gonna draw a little d20 there. At least I'm gonna try to. Trying to draw a d20. There we go. 20. That's a die there. It's a d20. Disney Queen, Dr. Agon Bite. Dr. Agon's Bite. Dr. Agon invented the bite. All that thing that, that thing that you do when you like Dr. Agon invented that invented that one. Dr. Agony. First name Bartholomew. I don't know. Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Bartholomew is a very cool name. It's a complicated name. I, I I'm having a hard time pronouncing it and I haven't even started drinking tonight anything other than H2O. So that's going to be our marching order. I don't need anything else behind me. This doesn't need to be there. Math my initials Dr. Agony. Get out of here. Get out of here. I didn't plan this. I'm very, I'm actually very, very happy that we're starting with the, both the cocktails first and then something for the end. Like, I don't, I, that, that's like perfect, like, stagemanship. It's like the world wanted a, a, a rising performance and then we fall. Um, and Dragon's Bite was honestly the one that I was hoping to do second because it's the cooler one. And I bought things specifically for this cocktail that literally just came in the mail about an hour ago. Oh, and I drop it literally all over the floor. It's okay. Luckily, they're not perishable. It's gonna be totally fine. The Dr. Bartholomew Agon. Well, we'll see. We'll see whether or not he lives another day. If it's that good of a drink, Dr. Bartholomew Agon will not survive. I will eviscerate him. I will literally slurp Dr. Agon from his, his, his lair or something. I don't really know. Anyway, let's um, 
Let's get to a cocktail, shall we? The first cocktail on the list is the Mathavian. Now this cocktail has a bit of flavor text associated with it because I don't know if Mathavian is, comes from the root word for mathematics. I don't know if it come, if it's supposed to be like Mav or supposed to be like Mathavian or Mathavian. Maybe like flurry your sounds a little bit. I'm honestly not so sure. Anyway, this drink is to immortalize a heroic high elf who aided us through the dark caverns of Kanathar. If it weren't for his quick thinking, we'd be in the belly of an undertroll. This drink will put whiskers on an elf's chin. Luckily, I'm a human, so it won't put any hair on my chin that isn't already there. And if it is still there, I, it honestly makes sense. I shaved this morning, and it's been hours since this morning happened. The Mathavian. The book, the page of the Mathavian looks a little something like this. I, I do that. I'm not gonna, it takes so much time to zoom in. I'm not gonna bother with it. The Mathavian requires this set of ingredients. Re uh, reposado tequila, apricot liqueur, lemon juice, orange juice, agave syrup, two to three dashes of aromatic bitters, mezcal, and absinthe. You garnish that with an orange wheel and some candied apricot. I apologize in advance. My apricot is not candied, but my apricot is dried, and I'm very happy to share my apricot with you. It's probiotic. We'll, we'll see when we get there. The Mathavian. Let's get things started. I'm going to put my cocktail book over here. I've been rearranging a bit. I finally got my mini fridge. Oh my god, it's so crazy. You want ice in your cocktail? It's easy. It's literally right here. I have ice because I have a mini fridge now. It's so great. After ordering one from goodness knows where, it never came. I was on my toes for a month hoping that it would arrive, but it never did. So the instructions for this book, I should really read that before I actually start making it, is to combine all the ingredients except for the mezcal and the absinthe into a mixing tin with ice. Rinse the glass with absinthe, uh, then shake and strain ingredients into the glass. Add ice, top of the full of mezcal, garnish with orange wheel and candied apricot. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we need to grab a glass and coat the inside of it with some absinthe. I think both of the cocktails tonight actually call for absinthe in some regard, which is pretty cool because I rarely get the opportunity to use absinthe, but like it's a mystic cocktail. Cocktail. And wormwood, which is supposedly used to flavor absinthe, is just such a mystic thing. Maybe it makes you high. Maybe it makes you die. Who really knows? I'm here for the ride. Bars. I'm gonna grab uh, the the um the the glass in the the glass in the book. It looks like a very warped tall glass, and so I'm gonna get. A tall glass but the next drink also uses a tall glass too and I don't have that many of them so I'm gonna take some creative liberties and instead of a wave that looks something like this it's gonna be something like this know what I'm saying you might not I'll show you don't worry I'm gonna go with this glass this is the glass that I'm gonna use. It's kinda, it's, it's basically exactly what I was describing. Like, if you think that I was off the ball there, you're wrong. It's absolutely, this. we're talking about this. Not talking about this. Not talking about this. Talk about this, and that's what we're gonna use. So let me grab some absinthe. I only have one. Um, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I don't really have anything to compare it to. Um, one of my younger brothers, uh, where the, the the brothers of the Cal family are a very very rambunctious crowd. Um, supposedly absinthe, and I don't know if it still remains to be the case, was one of his favorite spirits. So you, you when you go through college and stuff, and life is tough and whatnot, sometimes you have a particular spirit of choice. I think my spirit of choice was gin, I guess. Yeah, I really like gin. I went through, I've gone through gin a lot. And, and then vodka, because vodka's a great mixer. Uh, his was apparently absinthe. And I remember having an absinthe night one time. That was something. So in order to in order to rinse a glass with absinthe, you do exactly what it sounds like. You just put a bit of the absinthe into your glass, and you just kind of like coat the inside of the glass with it. You don't exactly need much of it. Um, some would say, so you put it in the bottom, and you just kind of like let it go. Let's see, let's let's zoom in on that. That feels like a zoomable moment, right? Zoomable moment? Zoom approved? Zoom approved. Zoom approved. Zoom approved with my school account, which I still use. Yeah, there's some, you can see there's a little bit of absinthe in the bottom of that glass. We're just gonna kinda like, uh, just coat it around, just like this, uh, until we've coated most of it. Now, I have some very interesting curves on this glass, so whether or not this is gonna work to my liking is beyond me. Actually, you know what I can do? I have a little plate that I'm gonna put onto the other end of this glass so that the, the um, hopefully, the absinthe doesn't fall out the other side. I have no idea if this is gonna work. Uh, I'm an engineer, I think things up. Oh, ooh, actually that's kinda, I don't know if you can see that, but we're gonna try our best here. I am completely rimming the inside of this glass with absinthe. Oh my God, it's totally working. 
The curves are actually being used to my advantage and making a very interesting squeaking sound. I am so sorry about that if that's getting picked up on the microphone. Yeah, that's annoying. Actually, I'm gonna stop doing that. I think, yeah, we're rinsed. Yeah, we're rinsed. I consider myself rinsed off. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put this plate back. I don't think it actually, I don't think I needed to use it all. Ah, ah, please stay there. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, that's, that zoomed too far out. We don't need that. Anyway, you have a very, you have a very, uh, very rinsed glass here. Very, very rinsed glass. It smells, <coughs> <coughs> smells like absinthe. Who knew? Wormwood or something? So now, there are other cocktails out there, for example, the Sazerac, which also uh, makes you, it forces you to rinse the glass in absinthe. Technically speaking, after you're done rinsing your glass, you could dump out the excess absinthe, or you can keep it in there. I'm, um, I'm an adventurous type. And um, I'm the one making cocktails here, and I don't think I should waste anything that comes onto this bar. So um, I'm going to keep the absinthe there. There's really not a lot of it. So in the meantime, I'm going to take this rinsed glass, and I'm going to just put it to the side. The next thing we're going to need is a cocktail shaker. And I've got at least one of those around here. Yeah, right there. Want to see a trick? I'm overconfident. Wow, that was so cool. I don't plan on doing that again. Um, combine all the ingredients into the mixing tin with ice. So we're also going to need some ice. And lucky for you, it doesn't have to take too long. With my patented Cameron fridge of holding, <laughs> I have ice cubes on standby. Because my fridge of holding goes to a place of sheer cold. There is no heat. There's no motion of molecules. It's just standstill. The lack of motion is what makes my refrigerator of holding better than yours which might go to like an empty void and technically there's no motion in the void if there's nothing at all. So if we want to get into specifics, maybe you could stand the match against my fridge of holding. Um, but that's not up for discussion right now. I put a glass, I put a big old ice cube in there. Technically I should put some small ice cubes in there as well. I don't think it really matters, but you know, some people would argue against it. I've tried to crack a big ice cube to combine with the small, to combine as a means in smaller pieces with the bigger ice cube, but it's never worked out. Never has, probably never will. Lil Abe just did some looking, and it seems the drink is a personalized cocktail that someone submitted and is named after this D&D character. That's pretty cool, actually. I think from the ingredients that are listed there, it's kind of sazerac -y because you rinse the glass with absinthe. It's kind of margarita-y because it uses that agave syrup and the, there's, and the tequila flavors there, both the tequila and the mezcal. And there's other stuff in there. It's got apricot, which just feels awesome. It feels like a nice twist there. Maybe that was like this particular character. Like maybe maybe stone fruits were those, was their thing. Thing. apricots stone fruits like uh, peaches and nectarines blackberries and raspberries i believe are also stone fruits they're not technically berries they're like compound berries we've done research into this it's a it's a very the the lunch table at work is always a time for exploration so the first thing that we're going to need in our glass i put it in the clear glass so we can watch colors change as we mix things together is two ounces or about 60 milliliters of reposado tequila reposado tequila is just kind of darker than the blanco tequila blanco meaning white reposado meaning something else i have what's my good reposado here ah ha 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 it's the bottle of patron that my mother gave me that i don't often go to because it's freaking expensive i don't want to run out of this because then i have to feel inclined to go get more Where's my measuring majigger? Here's my measuring majigger. Oh, you know what's really cool? Here's another really cool thing. When I bought this, when I bought this cocktail book, it came with this like stabby thing that uh, is like a, you can use it as like a garnish to the cocktails and stuff, but it honestly looks like something that you can use to stab your friends across the table when you get too drunk. And the, 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 rolling, for, the rolling for strength checks just doesn't cut it at that point. It's very, very sharp. It's very pointy. It's made of plastic. I could probably do really well stabbing an orange with this. And um, I might feel so inclined to stab an orange. My oranges are back here. I'm going to keep this thorn with the oranges in case we feel so inclined later to stab the flesh of a young fruit. Or rather, a not so young fruit. If it, if it became a fruit, it's, it's, not, it's not young. In any case, two ounces of, or 60 milliliters of Reposado tequila. Honestly, as I, as I do as most things, if you don't have the ingredient there, whatever, just take what you can. I think the point here is you want tequila. And if you don't have mezcal, here's a, here's a tip. Mezcal is just not Blue Weber agave, or I guess it could technically be Blue Weber agave, but maybe a combination. You could just use more tequila. Float tequila on top of tequila. Tequila, tequila, tequila. Da -da 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 -da. The next ingredient is, oh, how many is that? 
one half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of apricot liqueur. Apricot is a wonderful, wonderful fruit. Every time I think of apricot, I think of the candied apricots that I would catch my fiance's mother eating. They're very, very tasty, very, very good. And every time I think of apricots, I also for some reason think of kumquats. And if you've never had a kumquat, think of a kumquat as a very, very small tart orange that's like the, out, the skin, you're supposed to eat the skin. The skin itself tastes like a sugary citrus peel that's actually enjoyable, and the inside is like a puckering lemon. That's why I love to pop kumquats in my mouth, because they're delicious. And it's fun to say the word kumquat, especially when people are watching. In any case, you need a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of apricot liqueur. I've got Joaquin's, Jaquin's, apricot flavored brandy. I, I don't know, when I when I think of something that's liqueur -y, I think of something that's a little less, like, uh, this just feels very obvious, it's like the obvious choice for apricot brandy, but I don't know of any others, and Pennsylvania is very, very stingy with what kind of alcohols they bring into the state. So I don't have a very, I don't have a lot of options here unless I feel like driving back to Jersey, um, or to Delaware, I guess. Delaware is always a nice place to go for things like that. I was wondering why I had it down there. I had that with my brandy and stuff, but it could be in the... I have a whole sorting system back here. I may need to change that up. It's technically brandy, so it's with the other brandy, but it's a flavored brandy. So is it really brandy? Yes. But is it also liqueur? Yes, it also is. In any case, what does it smell like so far? Tequila and apricot. That is a, it's mostly tequila. It mostly smells like tequila, but that's a, that's a combination of smells that I'm not, I'm not used to bringing into my body. So I'm actually, I'm a fan of that. The next ingredient that we're going to need is... Sorry, the text is really, really small, and I don't have my glasses on. Wait, I can go get my glasses. Hold up a second. I'm going to go get my glasses. Boom! <laughs> Sorry, that was probably very scary. I will not jump scare you like that again. I have my glasses on so I can see things. Great, don't need that anymore. Half an ounce of lemon juice. It's lemon juice, right? That's what I get for doubting myself. Lemon juice. Well, I have some lemon juice. I actually don't have any lemons up here. However, I think I made, um, I think I squeezed some lemon juice earlier this week, so hopefully this is a half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters, and we'll see where that gets us. Eww, don't spill, please. Um, it can be any type of lemon juice. You can squeeze it if you can get it fresh, and that's the best way to do it. But some of us aren't as privileged, so that's fine too. I have here unfiltered lemon juice, and there's about just about a half an ounce there. So lucky for me. It's unfiltered. I don't think this says anything about straining, right? Mix it together, rinse, shake, strain. Oh, it does say strain. So all those little pulpy bits are not going to make it out to the other side. Not this time, at least. Let's move along here. We have our lemon juice in there. We have our tequila. We have our apricot liqueur. It's a long list of ingredients, so we're going to be here for a while. I don't mind just skipping ahead to the next one. I might get caught in my fantasies. We still have so many more to go. If you can read... Can you read that? I don't really know. We're making things better around here. Boo! <laughs> I spooked you. It's a thing that I did. Um, you can't tell, but that's... Maybe you can tell. That's a, that's, a, that's a clip. I can tell when they're clips. I see the chat over... Yeah, everywhere. The next ingredient we need is three quarters of an ounce of orange juice. I actually do have oranges, which I didn't yet stab. So let me move some things off to the side. Let's get our orange orange tenderizer. It's a it tenderizes the oranges. I don't know why I took the top off. I literally don't need it. Oh, but you do know what I do need? Stabby board, everybody's favorite cutting board. My favorite cutting board, stabby board, and an orange. I assure you it's an orange. Um. What kind of orange? Sun kissed. Kissed by the sun. Mwah. I did have three oranges, but one of them was a moldy, moldy mess, so that's unfortunate. Now, I also need to make sure that we have an orange wheel. I need an orange wheel, so I'm actually going to cut off the orange wheel now so that I don't forget about it later. Uh, otherwise, I, I am very prone to forgetting things, so let's do that. Let's get a nice orange wheel. It's kind of squishy, so I'm going to be very careful with it. Very, 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 very careful. Wow, look at how careful I was with that. Vaguely. I'm going to take this orange wheel and save it for later by putting it here. There we go. I will not forget about that orange wheel now. And then we'll take the rest of it to make some juice. We only need three quarters of an ounce or about... 44 milliliters? No, that's not. That's too much. Uh, 22 milliliters. 22 milliliters for three quarters of an ounce. 
I'm still working on my um, my conversions and stuff like that. But you know, you know, it takes a while to learn a new language. It takes a while to learn a whole, a whole new measuring system. It's a thing. Honestly, I'm not very good with ounces and whatnot anyway. I just kind of memorized that stuff too. I've always been very good at memorizing things. Allegedly, I once memorized the entire script for Fiddler on the Roof. Um, I, pl I had the I had the main role as Tevia, so it kind of makes sense. This is a very this is a very soft orange. It's a very juicy one though. The very soft and juicy orange. It was toward the top part of my new mini fridge, which for some reason has ice crystals forming on it. I'm not sure why. Honestly, not something to worry about right now. I'm just, I just don't need to. Great. We have orange juice. I hope it's three quarters of an ounce. Because if it's not, I'm going to have to eviscerate another orange tonight. Oh, why are you spilling out the side? Don't, don't do that. I'm just going to... I don't like this container. This container's not cool. This container is not cool. It's dripping off the side. What are you doing? Please don't do this to me. Please? There we go. There we go. There she comes. That's three quarters of an ounce. I don't need any more. Put it in a glass. Move on. I don't like dealing with oranges. I very well might need this. I don't know if I need this later, but I am going to save it. So I'm going to put this to the side. And if Cameron doesn't leave that like he did the pineapple ch chunks last week, he will be able to get to it first before the fruit flies do. Yay. Wonderful. I make mistakes a lot. But it's okay. That's what living is all about. The next ingredient that we're going to need is one half an ounce of agave syrup i got some agave i bought it at whole foods a while ago it's um oh, okay it's not technically agave syrup it's raw agave nectar um but it's got a lot of sugar in it so i'm inclined to believe that it pretty much serves the same purpose and um if you disagree then i encourage you to fight me on it that's okay it's it's gonna be a wind a matter of rolling dice anyway so there's that there's no fisticuffs um however if you get too close i am within my right to defend myself with this piece of plastic that i found in my collection because i purchased a book at a convention because it's all about free things at conventions i need half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of agave syrup raw agave nectar it's pretty much whatever agave stuff that you have on hand so that's just how it's gonna be Excellent, and I need about half an ounce of that. It's a little viscous, so I don't think I'm gonna get all of it out So I'm gonna over pour it just a tad just so I make sure I get all that in there It's got a nice Amber color to it got a nice amber color at the bottom of that glass uh, I can't wait to shake that up so I can mix it up. I also realize my ice cubes are melting. That's fine That's fine. I'd say nobody cares, but I'm the one who cares, but I care very little so essentially it's nobody I'm going to put this syrup back in the corner while stealing a glimpse at the next ingredient. It's two to three dashes of aromatic bitters. I have a collection of bitters back here, and I don't know if any of them categorize themselves as aromatic bitters aside from, let's see, I've got Angostura, I've got Pichaud's, and I've got Fee Brothers, old-fashioned bitters. Um, I've actually, I... I tried using these. I, I, I make I make cocktails for myself. Who knew? And um, I made myself a I think it was a Manhattan the other day, and I put some bitters in it. But instead of using the Angostura like I normally do, I had bought this old fat this bottle of old fashioned bitters. I think while I was on vacation this year for use in cocktails, five fluid ounces, incredible. And I just wanted to see like if it would really change up the drink because usually when I add bitters to a drink, it's as kind of as a way to like accentuate some other flavor or hit the nose first with a different sensation than the. The rest of the tongue what the rest of the tongue is going to do but i swear i use the same exact ingredients as i usually do but i put these bitters into it and the drink tasted completely different to be fair i did use a different uh whiskey than i usually do it was my savannah bourbon which is absolutely amazing and in the regular vermouth i think i used uh carpano antica um and, and an orange slice or, or an orange d d twist just like I normally do and I put these bitters in it and it tasted like a completely different drink and so I'm very excited by that and I kind of want to use it because it says old-fashioned old-fashioned not old-fashioned old-fashioned aromatic bitters for using cocktails I think Peshoz is also considered aromatic cocktail bitters and Angostura also says aromatic but um you tickled me the right way the other day, Fee Brothers, so I am going to use you this time because I am very curious to see if you will put on the same performance that you did the other day. You need two to three dashes. Two to three? Two to three dashes. So let's do that. One, two, three. I like my bitters more on the, cra on the crazy, crazy side. Hey, that's a heart for my mother. You know what they say, you know what they say about mothers? They birth children. 
Or at least raise them. Whoa, something fell back there. What was that? I don't think anybody cares. Well, actually, it probably was in my fridge. Hello? Anybody fall back there? Is everybody okay in that mini fridge? Mini fridge of holding? You okay back there? I think I may have stuck a changeling in there somewhere, and to be perfectly honest, it's like that game Prop Humped. I don't know if they're okay, whether they're still alive, or whether they're just dis like disguised as one of my ice cubes. I'm not sure, but I can't say that I'm entirely worried either. Um, they're the, they're, uh, they're sturdy ones. Dad too. Oh, hi, Dad. I'll do a party horn for you too. I was trying to blow that one across the room. It just didn't work, so I'm gonna throw it. We don't need it. It didn't hit anybody, I promise. These are all the liquid ingredients that we require in our cocktail this time. The Mathavian. 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 Named after a mighty warrior who saved us from adventure one time. That's all we need in it. We also need, don't forget, we also need mezcal and absinthe, but the absinthe is already in the glass. So now that all we have to do is put it together and shake it. So let's do that. And what I'm gonna do is, I have the microphone a lot closer to my face this time than I normally do. Don't know how things are going to go. So I'm just gonna kinda like, I'm gonna push the microphone backwards so I can shake things over here and hopefully that sounds okay and doesn't destroy anybody's eardrums. And if it does, I'm sorry. Oh, nice, that was good, that was a good one. Shake a shake a, um, how many seconds? How many seconds am I gonna shake it? Let's roll a d20. Where's my d20s? D20. Go into the bag of dice. If the shaking didn't kill your eardrums, that bag slam on the table certainly did. D20, that's a D12. D20, that's a D6. D20, that's a D20, and a D6. Excellent, put those back in the bag. How many seconds? How many seconds are we shaking for? D20. 10? Alrighty then, 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's how long we shake it for. Bring the microphone back. Bring it back now, y'all. Beautiful D20. Nice D20. That's the second D20 of the night. I don't know where the other one went. It doesn't really matter. So the next thing we need to do is we need to build a cocktail. We have the glass prepared. We have the garnish more or less prepared. There's another piece of it that we're going to get to in a little bit. Um, so let's let's put this guy up on the high horse it deserves, Mathavian, for being a mighty, mighty hero. I have yoga blocks. I found my yoga blocks. Oh, put it up on top. I'm going to very carefully remove the orange wheel that I put into the glass, put it to the side. I just realized now that I'm gonna to need to cut that a little bit. So um, evasive maneuvers, evasive maneuvers. I'm going to very, I'm gonna make a cut, make a cut, making it. All right, a bunch of seeds fell out. That actually kind of helped me. Hey, we don't need those seeds. I don't need seeds on this bar. No, it's fine. It's fine, get out of here, seeds. You stay down there. No, I'm stepping on my, I'm stepping on my dice, I'm stepping on my ice, I'm stepping on mice, which I don't see any of. Good, because I stepped on all of them. And we're gonna do a little zoom. Let's, let's do a little zoom. Where's my thing? There's my thing. Hey, everybody. Cocktail time. Let's see if that's nice. We might need another one. We might need another uh, yoga block. We'll see how that looks. Here we go. That looks pretty good to me. That looks good to me. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna combine it all together. We're gonna rinse the glass in absinthe. We already did that. We're gonna straighten it into the glass and top with a float of mezcal. Combine all ingredients into a mixing tin with ice, rinse glass, shake, strain ingredients into a glass. The glass in question in the book has a couple of small ice cubes in it. So I'm gonna add a few small ice cubes um, because I feel like it actually needs it. Otherwise, there is gonna be nothing for things to float on top of. So let's add a few in there. One, two, three. We're just stacking them. Four. Alrighty then. Oh. Oh no 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 no. This isn't this isn't the cocktail I'm thinking. I was gonna say one of these ice cubes cubes has to be special for the other one. Otherwise it wouldn't be much of a dragon now, would it be? There we go. There's some ice cubes in there. That seems perfect. I like it. Do you like it? Of course you do. You don't have a preference. The camera, I mean. The people behind the camera are a different story. So let's let's strain it in and see what we got. I lick my fingers a little bit. It's tasting, it's different. I like that so far. Let's put it inside, and we also need to do a float of mezcal, so I shan't forget about that. There we go. That's a lovely orange color. It kind of looks like an apricot. Maybe that was the reason behind the uh, the garnish picks and uh, the the garnish decision here. 
there is not a lot of liquid in that. I chose a very s relatively small glass. Wow, that, that's all we have. Wow. Wowza. We also need a float of mezcal. Okay, well, it doesn't need to be a tall drink. This is, this is the level where he got... This is the level where he's going. It's the story. We're midway at the story mark here. That's how I'm flavoring this. We also need a float of mezcal. I have some mezcal. It's Del Magwe Vida. It's, a, it's this bottle. We saw this last week as well. I am going to try my best to float this on top. I have no idea whether it's going to work. I think if I just very carefully pour it on top of the bar spoon, it might actually work. And then if it flows down the side of the ice cubes, that could also work. See if that works. I don't have a very dark mezcal here. Oh my god, that totally works. Oh my god, it totally works. This is the line where the mezcal is, and this is everything else. It totally worked. Wow. That's so cool. I love that. I am totally into that. And the mezcal. Oh, I love that mezcal. It's smoky. It's great. It's wonderful. I'm just gonna drop. I didn't even need to do anything with this orange peel. I'm just gonna straight up drop it in there. I am definitely also going to need the other part of the garnish here. It's candied apricots. So I got candy apricots. They're probiotic. I bought them from Giants, a supermarket. Um, and because there's quite a lot of space in this glass, I'm just gonna throw a couple of uh, I'm gonna throw a couple of apricots in there. Oh, they're floating to the bottom. Well, let's throw apricots in there until some of them stay around the top, huh? Right? Okay, that was that was one. Let's put a few more apricots in there. Let's just say Mathavian freaking loved apricots. Mathavian's a good berry kind of dude. Yeah, there we go. Bunch of apricots. I love it. There's an orange wheel on top, and uh, that's gonna be a pretty. It's gonna take a really long time to drink that if I don't have some sort of straw in it to protect me. Here. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. The Mathavian, everybody. It's a cocktail based off of a wizard. Wizard? No, it was um a high elf. We didn't actually get an idea of what their class was. But this is a Math this is the Mathavian. I didn't exactly fill it all the way to the top, but I don't wind up measuring these things out ahead of time. So honestly, I'd I'd say it's okay. It's probably gonna be a mighty fine drink. Cameron, hi, Paul Tracy. Hi, hello, welcome back. <laughs> How are you today? I made a cocktail. I'm very proud of myself. I'm gonna put this yoga block down there. I don't need it right now. It's fine. It does not serve me. It does not manifest this energy that I'm trying to go for right now. I'm gonna take my gunky stuff and put them on the side. I might, I might use those again. I'm still figuring out a place to put like discarded things and whatnot. In any case, the Mathavian, a drink inspired by a mighty high elf, can be created with the following reagents in the following order. Two ounces or 60 milliliters of Reposado tequila. I used Patron. Half an ounce of apricot liqueur or about 15 milliliters. I used Jaqueens, Jaqueens, Jaqueens. I don't know. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of lemon juice. I used some that's been sitting in my fridge for about a week, but it's still sour, so it works. Three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of orange juice, which was freshly squeezed. Half an ounce or 50 milliliters of agave syrup. I used 365 brand. I got it from Whole Foods. Agave nectar I used. Two to three dashes of aromatic bitters. I used Fee Brothers old-fashioned bitters. Mezcal float on top, which I used... Del Magway Vita, and we also have a glass that's been rinsed with absinthe, and there was a little bit left at the bottom. I used Vio Carre. It's it's spelled weird, so try to don't try to sound it out. It's not going to help you. It's garnished with an orange wheel, and also a good many candied apricots because one just did not cut it. So that's what we're going for. That's the Mathavian. I wonder how that tastes. I drank, says Peter Tracy, a Jack Daniels watermelon punch beer. I think I went to a bar recently, and it was supposed to be like a. Uh, it was supposed to be like a in memory of the founding fathers watermelon beer, and it tasted terrible. It tasted like somebody decided to take a watermelon and throw it through a hay bale and be like, drink that. <laughs> And that's what it tasted. That's what it tasted like. It tasted like hay and and a tad bit of watermelon, but the watermelon's far gone, and it's very much on the other side of the farm, and you're not seeing it again because the cows already got to it. And if you go after it after that, well, that's your prerogative. Mathavian. Whoa. Okay. All right. Okay. First thing I'm getting. I get sweetness of apricot in there. It tastes like the main sweetness here, I really think is the apricot. 
it's balanced super duper well by the sourness of the lemon juice in there. But, but aside from that, and it's maybe because my, my straw is literally right next to one of the apricots down there, it's so good. Oh my god, this is really good. It tastes like apricot. I think the main flavors that I get are apricot, and I get the absinthe. The absinthe has such a strong flavor in there that it's like, it's actually taking a sidestep from the tequila and the mezcal, which usually is like the four, like the four player here. Four player? The front row player, not the four player, unless they are also the four player. Four player, four player, four player. I don't even know. But this is a really, really cool combination. I haven't had a lot of apricot drinks in my life, but this is a really, really good one. I think for the most part, I think the complexity of putting all these different ingredients together kind of like loses a lot of what's going on there. But then again, I did only take one sip and there are many, many more to be had. So maybe I'm just being a little superficial here. There's something else in there. I can definitely taste, there's another sweetness that's just like, it's different. Also, there's a float of mezcal on top, so I assume what you're supposed to be doing, if you're not using a straw like me, is to actually sip it from that, and to get like the full flavor action going on. So I'll take a sip next and see what we get. But it's a very, very nice combination. I honestly did not expect something that was so apricot forward to taste this, it's very, very pleasant. It tastes like apricot. It's very, very good, and I like that. And oddly, the, all in left, like I said, the par the apricot goes really, really well with those absinthe notes there. And, like, the tequila's lingering back there somewhere, although, honestly, I think it's kind of muted. It's kind of muted, despite the fact that there's two whole ounces in there. Paul Tracy also says that there's a Mike's Hard lemonade watermelon flavor, and it's good stuff. I love Mike's Hard. Mike's Hard is really, really good stuff. It's like, I think Mike's Hard lemonade was the first... Um, alcohol that I had drank in front of my parents where I like feigned drunkness because I was young at the time and I was like oh my god I'm so drunk I drink like half of Mike's hard lemonade um, I don't think I actually was I think I was just I was just playing a part and I was trying to play the part really well but as a kid you feel you feel that you're playing the part really really well but maybe you're not I wasn't a child actor. I wasn't so blessed to be on Disney Channel so I don't have the same success story that let's say the young um, Oh my god, who played Zack and Cody again? I don't I don't remember. Dylan and Cole Sprouse, that was their names. I think Cole actually has a very successful mead company now. Proud of that boy. So glad that we got to watch that man grow up. I think he was older than me. Maybe he is? Or maybe a little bit younger? I don't really know. We don't get envious at other people's success. We applaud their success and say, you go kid, you go get him. And then potentially hope to get to that point ourselves one day. Let's also take a sip of this because there's a bunch of mezcal floating on top. It's going to waste. Nah, just kidding. Okay, that that was just a straight up sip of mezcal. That's that's all mezcal there. It's good mezcal. It's a little watered down actually. So there is a bit of mixing going on there. And I think the mezcal is combining with the more diluted elements of the drink. What else did we put in there? There was also there's agave syrup in there. You know what? Actually, that's probably why it's so damn sweet. It's not the apricot brandy. It's not the other, like, lemony. It's not the lemon juice in there or anything like that. It's definitely the agave syrup. There was a heaping load of agave syrup in there, and that's definitely where all that sweetness is coming from. It's delightful. This is a really, really good cocktail. I think... This is one of those ones that, like, if somebody decided to make a cocktail in, like, in my memory or in, um, a bite via request, I would have absolutely no complaints about this. Like, no complaints at all. It's very, very drinkable. It's very, very enjoyable. And this feels like it's tall enough to be, like, a wizard staff that I can use with, like, it's like a wizard staff, but it's only got a couple chargers on it. So I'm like, I have five more chargers left on my inebriation staff, and I'm about to use one of them. That's so cool. Absinthe and apricot. Ooh, that is a really good combo. I really, really like that. It's mixed so well. I'll, I'll also mention too, absinthe that I've had in cocktails, usually like, it, it's, it can be overbearing. I have yet to have an absinthe cocktail, except for this one, where I'm like, wow, that really, really plays well and it isn't just a distraction from everything else. So there's that. And it's, um, I think because of them being the ingredients, it was a little margarita, mar mar margarita, margarita e. Um, but it's kind of lost on me. It's got a bit of a thing there. It's got a bit of a margarita ness there. But um, in place of like, I guess the saltiness of like a salt rimmed margarita glass, it's uh, it's candied, it's candied apricots. I'm gonna eat one. That's delicious. I love that very much. So what do we think of the methadium? It's good. I like that. Do we want to give it a rating? This thing's freaking delicious. 
It's satisfying to drink. It was fun to make because it had a bunch of stuff in it and whatnot. Um, I didn't quite get to the top of my glass though. Um, I think that I guess. I really like that. I want to give it an eight, but I don't want to. I don't want to just like sell out because it's sweet. So I'm gonna give it a seven point five. It's not like it's not blowing me out of the water, but it's really good and I would recommend it to people. Actually, I take it back. I'm gonna give it an eight because I am a sellout and that's just that's just who I am. I love that. Eight out of ten. That's beautiful. That's a really really good drink. I really really like that. Anna, would you like to try this? What is it? It's a sweet apricot drink with absinthe. I think you might actually like it. You wanna try it? I don't know if I like apricot though. You might. Give it a try. What do you think? Is it an eight? Would you agree with the eight rating? Boo. Yeah. No, 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 no. Tastes like apricot. Would you agree? Oh, you're not saying <laughs> apricot? Here, taste one of the apricots. They're good. Didn't you eat some last night? They're good. Mm -hmm. They're very good apricots. Let me taste the apricots. No, no, that's okay, that's okay. I don't like apricots. She's not an apricot gonna go. Do you like peaches or nectarines? I like peaches. Like peaches? So not completely not a stone fruit kind of gal, but um, definitely not apricot. Okay. I give it a two. It tastes like absence and apricot. Anna's rating will be in blue. Ooh. That's probably fine. You just need to be happy. You just need some of that like absence. The absence of what? <laughs> hey, you got him. Thank you so much for participating in this game, dear. Thank you very much. Tell Anna I said hello. Hello. Paul Tracy says hello. Oh, Mr. Paul Tracy. I think she got the message. I go back to in any case, so that was the Bethavian, a drink that was supposedly, allegedly, made as a request for somebody to remember their D&D &D character who, if the book is not lying to me, was a high elf who saved the people who fought in the dark caverns of Kanathar from an under troll's belly. The underbelly of the under troll, it seems. That's cool. One cocktail down. So that's one off the list. Now that Methavian's turn is over, we can move on to the dragon's bite. It's the dragon's turn. Excuse me. Dr. Agon, Dr. Bartholomew Mew Agon's turn. God, I'm getting all burpy up here. Tastes like dinner. We had pierogies. Is your bro home from Sweden yet? It's getting cold here. We are all back in the States. We are all happily back in the States. The brothers in their corresponding locations, me in Philadelphia, the rest of them elsewhere. I wouldn't dox my brothers like that. And my parents are back home in Jersey. I would definitely dox them like that. Go visit them. They're nice people. The next cocktail that we have on the menu, aside from the Methavian, because I think we're finally moving. This is like, this feels like one of those games where like the, one of the particular players just takes forever with their turn. We are like about an hour in and we just finished one person's turn. Needless to say, this is going to be a really long night and an even longer campaign if we keep things going. Gotta love this drink. I need to put that on a coaster so I can actually serve that to myself. And drink water. Please don't forget to drink water. But I, I agree with that statement of coldness. It's kind of getting cold here in Philly, too. The uh, the outside was it's like 55 degrees this morning. I had to wear my coat to work, and then my bicycle broke. Then I had to take it to the bike shop. Today was not a... I'm going to be honest. Today was not a good day, which is one of the reasons why we're making two cocktails themed after D&D, &D, another comfort f game of mine. So if I flip back a couple of pages, I will find the Frostbite. That's not the right cocktail. The Dragon's Bite, that's the correct cocktail. The Dragon's Bite, which has a page that looks like this, is a brown colored, uh, it's a brown colored libation that has a glowing red heart, possibly alluding to the fiery belly of the dragon that decided to take a big old like, gash out of the glass itself. It's actually quite cool looking. I went searching on the internet for some something to use to make that happen, and I did. I found ice cubes that turn colors, except for some reason the most available ice cubes that turn colors online are the ones that flashed different colors and like bring on this sense of like strobiness and I really wasn't about that I didn't want to strobe myself I didn't want to strobe y'all so I found ones that have a couple different modes and one of them happens to be red and I found them on Amazon it was like 13 bucks for six of them honestly not too bad 
Mr. Paul Tracy says, I fly to Dallas on Friday from Albany, and then it's going to be sub 40 the entire week when he's back and going from one extreme to the other. I like, I was even thinking about going to Texas the other day, and then I stopped thinking about it because I don't really want to go to, I don't really want to go to Texas. One of the, um, I was talking with some folks, uh, not talking to some folks, I was talking to some open doors, some opportunities out there, and there was a potential opportunity of eventually going down to, uh, uh, uh not Dallas, Texas, it was, it was Austin, Texas? I think about it a little bit more now. I'm still noodling on it, but I'm kind of erring against it. I like Philadelphia. I'm here with Anna. I'm having a great time, so... But it'd be over a year from now, anyways. So we'll wind up seeing where we are then, and probably change, uh, probably reevaluate then. It's a lot to think about potentially taking up your entire existence. I've always lived on the, on the East Coast. I have been here my entire life so far, and it just feels, it feels really, really daunting to think that I could pick up my entire life and just like put it somewhere else, either on the West Coast or somewhere right smack in the middle, which is still hours and hours away from literally everything that I've ever known. It's kind of scary, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The Dragon's Bite, a cocktail that uh, doesn't really have, it doesn't have any flavor text to it, but it looks like a dragon took a bite out of the glass, or maybe like they just kind of like took their teeth around the glass and was like, <laughs> something like that. And there's, look, there's like gash marks in the glass itself, and unless that glass broke, which it didn't, then, um, it just it must have been some really, really hot claws. Tal Texas is cool. Paul Tracy liked it, but would never live the entire year because of skiing. But the people are nice, and it's cheaper to live there. That will be their, their third time in Dallas. I planned a trip to Dallas one time, but I, I never made it the all way out. So for the Dragon Bite, we have to combine all ingredients into a mixing tin over crushed ice, shake and strain over fresh ice, and top with additional crushed ice. If you have them available, a glow, red glowing ice cube is a nice touch, which I did manage to get literally about about two hours ago. It was an hour before Street Art started. We're about an hour into stream now, so that's just where we are. That's where we're at with that. Now it says here to combine all the ingredients into a mixing tin over crushed ice. That makes me think that I'm supposed to be putting crushed ice into the mixing tin, but then it says shake and strain over fresh ice and top with additional crushed ice. I guess I guess what it wants me to, what they want me to do is they want me to take crushed ice, put it into my cocktail shaker, give that bad girl a shake, and then put it over fresh ice, and then whatever other space we have left in the glass, we fill it back up with more crushed ice. So I am gonna need quite a bit of crushed ice here, um, and we'll get to that. I think what I'll do is I'll do the crushed ice after putting all the other ingredients into the glass because my process for creating crushed ice is a bit of an intense process. I don't have the proper bags for it. I don't have the proper mallet for it. Instead, I have cheesecloth, a pair of goggles, and a very large wrench. Not the biggest wrench I have in the apartment anymore. There's an even bigger one, um, although I don't, I don't have that with me right now. That's over in the tool closet where it belongs. So what are we going to need? We're going to need something to mix this thing in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Let me see. Do I have another mixing tin over here? To have a good mixing tin i really only have like one good shaker and like i don't I, I get a lot of mileage out of it so it's really good but it winds up becoming a problem when you do multiple cocktails in a night so let's see i got another one over here i have this one it's my plat it's my plaid shaker except what i'm going to do with it is because i kind of want to watch the color of this thing change over time i'm going to go and i'm not going to use this pint glass anymore you put that back to the side i'm going to use this other pint glass that i had laying around uh, it's got it's got an eagle on it because uh, we're in Philadelphia over here. Uh, it just had water in it before, so there's not gonna be any sort of flavor imparting there. And then I'll transfer it over to the shaker. We'll add some crushed ice, and uh, that's that's how we're gonna do the rest of the process. So, let's get things started. The first ingredient that we're gonna need is a single ounce of black strap rum for the Dragon's Bite. Now, I did a little bit of researching here to see what exactly they mean by blackstrap rum. When I looked up blackstrap rum, there was a particular brand of blackstrap rum that I've literally never seen before, and I was not going to be able to get over the course of the week unless I decided to ship it in, um, which that would be a next week thing. I really didn't feel like doing that because it was, it was pretty, like a $50, $50, $60 price tag on something that I don't see pop up very often. But apparently the blackstrap rums, for at least from my research, are just rums that are made from like the sugars and 
and whatnot that have been cooked to like the brink of like charring and stuff. It's a very, very, it's more on the edge of like, if you think molasses on being as one side of the spectrum and sugar being on the other side with like caramel in the middle, it's more molasses-y than it is caramel-y. And if you think about color, this is clear, this is clear on one side. Um, this is your kind of gold in the middle, and you've got your darks all the way on the other side. There are some rums out there, like Kraken and Goslings, that aren't, they're, they're, they're dark. They're really, really, they're like the Black Seal rum. It's the dark sea of the Kraken. But I don't think they actually use any sort of, I don't think any part of the process actually imparts that black color into the rum itself, aside from just adding like food dye and a bunch of caramel color, which personally, I'm not that into. I'm not super familiar with the brand, I, I can't figure it out the top of my head, but the black strap rum, rum that I found as I was searching the internet at like 11.30 last night, um, I don't know if they use artificial colors, I, or not necessarily artificial, I don't know if they add extra coloring to it or if the really, really dark color is just a part of the process. So I'm just, I'm choosing as my substitution the darkest rum that I have in my collection that isn't Goslings, and that's Meyer's rum. It's a very, I would say, out of all the rums that I've had, and it really hasn't been too many, but I do have quite a number of rums here behind the bar. This is the one that I would liken most to a deep caramel or close to molasses. I've never actually had molasses before, so I don't exactly know what it tastes like, but what I imagine molasses to taste like is exactly what I get out of this bottle here. Also, it's got a dark color to it. I think the point of this drink, which is why it appears all brown on the outside, is to use most, most of the color is gonna come from that blackstrap rum or whatever other rums you put into it. I, for one, have, there's another rum ingredient. It uses a high proof rum that we can set on fire, although it gets mixed into the drink, so we're probably not gonna set it on fire, although that would be a nice touch for a drink called the Dragon's Bite. Um, but it's also, it's the Black Seal, because it's the only 151 that I have, but we'll get there. Philly Eagles are three and oh, nice cup. Undefeated cup, you could say. Indeed. We'll see if they get to the Super Bowl again, and then the people of Philadelphia will run wild through the streets and try to climb up signs, break down awnings, and steal police horses, which is what happened the first time that that happened. And my goodness, was that quite an experience to talk about between you and me during what I would call the the um, what what I, I what I probably miss miscall the what the, the Philly Eagles riots because there definitely wasn't a parade. Sorry, there was a lot of agave nectar left in there. Let me actually. Let me wipe that out. I don't need that. Also made a very funny sound too. Um, but yeah, um, I found a sawhorse. One of those things that's got orange on it. It's got white on it. It's supposed to block roads and stuff. Well, I unblocked the road. I took it back with me. And I made it into my first bar, which is still sitting in my fraternity house. And I'm very, very proud of that. I went back um, after like COVID and whatnot had ended. And I went to go say hello to everybody. And I saw it in the corner. They put a mini fridge on top of it. It was like, oh my God, you're using the thing that I made that I left here on purpose because I don't need it. I plan on getting a better bar which I did. We need one ounce of blackstrap rum or the darkest rum that you have that's more of a, if you're, the mouthfeel and taste that you're going to is something more molasses-y, if you can handle it. If you can find it, that is. I chose Myers. It's dark, dark enough for me at least, and we'll need about an ounce or 30 milliliters of that, whatever glass you have, the Eagles champions glass. I actually got that, I got that. Actually, 2017 was the year that they were the champions. I got this from my first co-op, which was apparently Many, many years ago. Many, many moons ago. Oh, Pats lost. The Pats lost that Super Bowl. Very sad. Very, very sad. Very sad for the Pats, which I assume means Patriots. I'm a sports ball kind of guy. Now that I think about it, I just realized too, in the corner over here, Anna recently went on a trip to Guatemala. She came back. She brought me things. I just realized that I have this little nip of rum from Guatemala and it says Sobra Gran Reserva Solera Ron Zacapa Sen Centr Centrario, I think. It's a Ron Anellado. I don't know if that's rum, actually. An Ane Anellado? I don't know if this is rum or not. Is this rum? I can't tell. It's either rum or tequila. One of the two. I don't really know. Well, no, I don't know. It's rum. It says rum specifically. So it's an Ane. Anyado. Oh, that might be the name. Ron Anyado. That might actually be the name of the person who made this. Maybe it was their plantation or whatever. But I got this little dark rum here too. And I might have used that actually, when I come to think of it. We'll see that for another time. It's a cute little thing. We broke the glass on the front, so um I'm a little destructive sometimes. Um, not on purpose, I assure you. But we'll save that for another time. If I if I remember, which I'll try to. Paul Tracy says, it's alright. We got uh six Super Bowls this century. We gave you guys one to be nice. 
I appreciate it. I appreciate you for giving our city the chance to fight on their own and for Philly to just feel a little less sad. To even if for even this just for a little bit of a night. We appreciate that. So thank you, Vermont. In any case, the next ingredient that we're gonna need to add to this libation here is three quarters of an ounce of gold rum. The goldest rum that I have in my collection is Mount Gay. Mount Gay, it's a, it's a rum that has a color of gold. It is from Barbados. We like that. It's good, it's pretty good. I wouldn't say that I know that I've tried this rum enough to be able to say exactly what it tastes like compared to let's say the Myers rum. Um, it's nice. It grows really, really go well in a rum and coke if I do say so myself. My microphone is in the way, so I have to pour like this. You need three quarters of an ounce or about 22, millil uh, 22 milliliters into our, what will eventually become our cocktail shaker. Mount Gay. Mount Gay is apparently a place in, um, maybe it is in Trinidad and Tobago. Is it? Pasto House, Barbados. Oh, it was named after the pioneering of Sir John Gay. We've been through this before. This is not the first time that I've looked at the back of this bottle and been like, where did you get that from? Because I'm just, I'm just that kind of guy. I like to question things. The next ingredient that we're gonna need is three quarters of an ounce of Demerara 151 rum. This is another ingredient that I had to kind of convince myself of what I plan on using here based off of the availability around me. A Demerara rum could be one of two things. Demerara rum, at least to my knowledge, can either be rum that has been distilled from Demerara sugar, like Demer like which is just a particular type of sugar cane. It's, I think it's very, very fine. It's a very, like fine as in fine art, a very fine type of sugar. Not fine as in like really, really tiny. You can't see it except with a microscope. But it's a very fine type of sugar that I suppose you could use a pot still to distill and then create a very very high proof rum with it the 151 in this case 151 proof or demerara could re refer to a particular river that may or may not be called the demerara river and they use the sugar cane that grows on the coast of that river there um i'm not exactly sure so uh, that being the case I, I don't have it if i wanted to get demerara if i wanted to get specifically a demerara 151 rum what i would probably go for is lemon heart 151 which i believe is a demerara rum and also comes in that very very high proof i th since the first that i heard about overproof rum i have been trying to find lemon heart 151 in my in my local areas i checked multiple liquor stores in new jersey i've checked multiple liquor stores here in pennsylvania and i cannot find it anywhere i can't find the regular lemon heart and i also can't find the high proof lemon heart so i have to settle for the fact that uh, and uh, uh, like now that i think about it too i could very well ship things here but the last I checked, most online liquor distributors do not ship to my particular location because, ugh, Philadelphia. Blah. So the only overproof rum that I have is Gosling's 151 overproof. It's a very, very dark color. I don't think it's Demerara in any way, sh in any, uh, way shape, or form. But these are just kind of what I have, and it's a... Uh, it's overproof. It's 151 proof. So that's just what I'm going to use. So we need three quarters of an ounce of that. Just take what you get. If you have it on hand and you're trying to do the cooking by the book, just just take what you have. What I actually kind of like about this book as well is it openly shares about possible substitutions. For example, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like the idea of putting eggs in your cocktails, you don't necessarily have to use egg or various types of cream. They also offer as an alternative for use in like cocktails that would be beneficial, uh, benefited by like an egg white. They say use something like aquafaba, which is I believe an egg substitute. I've never actually had it. I don't even know where I would get it. I could probably order it online. The beautiful days of Amazon and eBay and stuff. But so I kind of like how the book kind of gives those, um, it gives those recommendations for people who just kind of want to take things a different direction or perhaps they just live their life differently than the lives of other people who are drinking cocktails. And there's absolutely no problem with that. If you are enjoying what you have in your cocktail glass, then that's an amazing thing. That's a wonderful phrase. It's a wonderful thought to have. And it's not even new. The next thing that we'll need is six drops of absinthe. The absinthe is actually going to come back here for another appearance, which is awesome. I literally, I only see the absinthe once in these cocktail streams. Only one time that pops up, usually, if that. And this time we get to see it twice, which is great. It's awesome. And in this case, we actually used to get, uh, you, whoa. <laughs> Words. Words. We're gonna take a words break, actually. I need to fill, fill up on my water. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a very small word break. I'm gonna be right over here.
Just refilling my water. Don't worry about it. There we go. Word break. Hydration break. Mm-mm, tasty. I love me some nice clear water. Where were we? We need six drops of absinthe. I have this particular dropper that has been sitting in my cocktail collection, in my in my bottles collection, for a really long time, and it says it says saline on it. It says H two O plus N A C L. It's salt water. I was keeping salt water in this for the longest time, and I think I only ever used salt water once in a cocktail, and it was mostly because previously I wasn't very, very close to all of my ingredients and stuff, so if I realized that I really, really needed saline solution in a pinch, I want to be able to get it in a pinch and distribute it in a pinch or a couple drops in this little pipette glass here. I realized literally today that I haven't used, sa I used saline exactly once in a drink. It doesn't come up very often, and to be perfectly honest, if I wanted to use saline, all I have to do is take a little bit of water and a little bit of salt and mix it up together with my finger and then put it into the glass. So this is going to be the communal pipette glass because I only have one. And what we'll do with that is we're going to fill it up with a little bit of absinthe and I'm actually going to be able for once in my life apply the cocktail ingredient in terms of, da uh, in terms of drops and dashes. It's great. Never use saline in any drink. Never? But what if I want liquid salt? If that's what the ingredients call for, that's what I'll do. That is what I will do. I'm gonna try to fill this very carefully with um, absinthe. All right, that's enough absinthe, I think. That's definitely safe. That's definitely, definitely at least six drops of it. I am actually, then use salt. I'm curious actually why you say not to use saline in any drink. I'm curious about what your thoughts are on that. Because I would think, I would think if you wanted to add, I mean, you could add salt to a drink, but if you think about it this way, salt will dissolve in water. And although alcohol isn't necessarily mostly water, it might not mix the, I, I mean, I don't really know. I don't know too much about the chemistry behind it all. Google it. I may Google it then. I will Google it then. You challenge me, I challenge you. Why don't we ever use saline in a drink? On the bright side, we're not using saline this time around, but when mother says, look it up, I'm gonna look it up. Saline solution in a drink? In a drink? What happens if you drink saline solution? No, not when I drink the whole thing. We add it to a cocktail as a reagent. Cocktail science. Does your cocktail need salt? Serious eats. I don't know. The case for adding salt to all of your cocktails, according to punchdrink.com. How and why do you use salt in your cocktails? Liquor.com. Adding salt to cocktails. Different saline solution. I would argue that you may need to do some Googling yourself to come up to the more modern days of cocktails. It's science, baby! And because we like to do science, we practice the art of titration. Allow me to titrate six drops of absinthe. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that's it. I was gonna say I'm one for good luck, but I don't think I wanna do another one for good luck. I don't think I need it. Thank you, Absinthe, you've served us well. I actually, I don't plan on using that again, so I might as well take the take the solution and just put it back inside. There we go. Thank you, Absinthe, you've served me well. Appreciate you. I cannot wait to be cleaning that later. Whoa, I stepped on my dice again. I do that often. After adding six drops of Absinthe, we're also going to need a half an ounce of cinnamon syrup, which is super duper awesome because I knew that I would be forgetting something on this cocktail stream and this was the thing that I forgot. I knew that I would be forgetting something. So I completely forgot to make cin uh, cinnamon syrup. So I'm gonna improvise here. I knew I'd be forgetting something. Instead what I'm gonna do is I have a collection of different syrups down here. See this one? I have burnt sugar and toffee. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a quick substitution. So it says that you want a cinnamon syrup. I know what cinnamon tastes like. I kind of know what I'm going for there. So instead, I actually bought, I was at a Renaissance fair recently, and I found this burnt sugar, toffee, charred oak and maple. I don't necessarily know if it's supposed to be bitters. I don't know if it's necessarily a syrup. It's very, very non-viscous. And so I'm actually just gonna add a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of this and a little bit of cinnamon liqueur there as well, just to kind of balance things out and add a little, a little extra dimension to this. I have no idea whether it's necessary. I don't really know if it's going to help, but I'm thinking on my feet, which is something that I do very, very often and would honestly be more than happy to do when it comes to, you kinda gotta think on your feet when you're playing D&D too, because you don't 
necessarily know what your dungeon master is thinking. You don't know what the other players are thinking. And hell, you don't even know what most of the NPCs are thinking either because you're in your head. You're not in their head. Unless you are in their head. In which case, you are a mighty caster and you have more spell slot, higher spell slots than I do. I am just a mere bard. So what I'll do is, we, if we need a half an ounce of cinnamon syrup, I'm going to put a half an ounce of this... It's by Yes Cocktail Company. Half an ounce of charred oak and maple oak burnt sugar, burnt sugar toffee syrup into the cocktail glass. And I'm also going to add, let's just, let's just say we'll add like less than a quarter of an ounce of cinnamon liqueur to kind of make up for whatever I'm missing from freshly made cinnamon syrup, which I, I completely forgot to do. I was actually just looking the other day to see about a, getting a tabletop stove because I'm curious. I was like, I feel like it wouldn't be that difficult to just make syrups on stream. Tabletop, like tabletop uh, stoves definitely exist. And I feel like it would be beneficial to have one of those. A little bit, a little bit of Goldschläger. It's cinnamon, it's cinnamon liqueur. It's the one that I would personally recommend. Uh, we also have, <laughs> technically we have fireball whiskey down here too, which I definitely could have used. Um, and no, it might, maybe it would have been the better choice to use fireball whiskey because I feel like if with the people that I know, with the people that I know, I feel like fireball whiskey would not be totally unwelcomed at the D and D table. It feels like that would even be part of the experience potentially, like a part of the uh, the gauntlet that you were going through, or a part of the campaign, the BBG, the big bad. The big bad guy that might be hanging on the other end, he's just like, You travelers, you find me here in my cavern. We will engage in combat. But before we engage in combat, first I challenge you to a drinking match. And both of us have to take a shot of fireball whiskey. And if you can take more shots than I, then I guess we can engage in the combat. But if I fall over and I die, then you win by default. And you can take all the treasure because I won't be able to stop you or something like that, you know. I love doing voices. It's a, I've always wanted to DM before and I've always wanted to put like voices and stuff into that campaign, but I am way too self-conscious about the campaign that I could potentially come up with. And I know I just could wing it because I know I can wing it, but just like, ugh, performance anxiety. I feel that. Not diagnosed. It's something I found on WebMD, just like everybody does. All the Zillennials are looking up their symptoms on WebMD. The next thing that I need is half an ounce of Falernum. Falernum is a rum-based concoction. It's like an infusion, but it's got a bunch of different stuff in it. I made my own falernum a while back. I think it had a little bit of, I think it had some like lime juice in it, had some allspice in it, had some clove in it. I don't exactly remember what the recipe is, but I do have my falernum somewhere down here and I kind of just need to find it. So that's the question. Where the hell is my falernum? I would guess that it's probably near my, probably near my rums. Is it near my rums? No, it's not near my rums. Where could it be? Maybe it's near my spicy stuff. I see the fireball whiskey. I see the nochino and stuff. Oh, 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 there it is, there it is, there it is. It was right next to my Amaro, right below some black currant bitters. I found my falernum. It's in a container that says falernum. And it smells like, if I can get it open. I have to open it twice because it's, it's one of those mason jars. This falernum smells like Oh my goodness. It's almost pepperminty? It's interesting. It's it's coming off coming off as almost pepperminty. Not like not like peppermint. I guess it's kind of peppermint, but it's almost medicinal in a way, like medicinal peppermint. If that exists, that's what this smells like, but in like a good way. It's kind of like you walk into the dentist office. That's what it smells like. It kind of smells as if somebody just walked past you and like imagine that they walked literally right through you and your nose passed through their mouth and they literally just brushed their teeth with like that, that green crest stuff. That's what it kind of smells like. Which is interesting, because I don't know why it smells like that. I see a couple of particulates floating in it, and I'm guessing it's probably whatever was in there. It might be the cinnamon, the allspice. I think I actually crushed up allspice for this, and I think there might have been a little bit of lime juice in there anyways. Anyway, mystery, mystery falernum. What the recipe is, I don't know, but I probably streamed what it was many, many moons ago. So if you're that curious, go diving. There's much other, there's much other great content to be found. Uh, and I didn't need half an ounce of it, or about 15 milliliters. So let's take some mystery, mystery falernum which I think was probably made with one of the Gosling's rums, if I had to think about it. 
because otherwise, I don't know, at the time, I don't know what else I would have had in my collection to give it this really, really dark color. So, we'll see. Still sipping on that Methavian. It's a good cocktail. It is a really good, it's like, it's still good. Honestly, now, so let's, let's, reflecting back on the Methavian, now that it's been a little bit, it's had some time to incorporate with the ice and mix around a little bit. This still tastes strongly of apricot. I'm getting the mezcal notes in there a lot more now, and now I can really taste the smokiness of the apricot. Whoa, that scared the shit out of me. Why are you making sounds, Falernum? Go back in your, go back in your corner. Falernum, you naughty boy. Scaring the shit out of me. The Methavian, nowadays, it's taste, I still taste the absinthe in there, but the absinthe has kind of subsided a bit. The absinthe is lower down in its, its potency, and it's made way for the mezcal, which is now making its own, like, married dance with the, uh, with the apricot flavor that's in there, which is really interesting. I, it tastes so, so strongly of apricot, which may be because we have a couple of apricots floating in there, maybe it's because the apricot flavored brandy is really that powerful. Or maybe it's just a matter of the like the agave syrup just like latches onto that ap ap apricot flavor and just like amplifies it. That's what I want to say. I want to believe in the fact that the agave syrup is acting as like a bardic inspiration dye to enhance the power, the spell power of like the apricot, uh, the apricot players that are in this Mavavian campaign thing. Are these D and D analogies doing anything for you? Because if they're not, that's fine. Everybody has their type, and Lord knows I have mine. The next ingredient that we need in addition to the falernum is... I think that says... No, I don't think there are any one-third of... I keep thinking that the one-half in the book says one-third. The text is a little difficult to read. I'm going to be fully honest there, but it's a great book. Mystic Libations. It's a great book. Half an ounce of lime juice. So we're going to need to bring um, my favorite cutting board back out here and make some space for it. We're going to cut a lime. It's fresh, yo. It's fresh. And I'm going to use the one, I have a lime that I made a cocktail with the other day. I shaved off parts of part of it, so um, I'm going to use this one because it's already looking a little, it's looking a little tired, looking a little tired. I need half an ounce of lime juice or 15 milliliters, so I'm just going to juice some lime into this uh, measuring majigger until I have about half an ounce. And then um, we'll see what we do with the rest of the lime. I might actually just juice the rest of it, otherwise I don't know if I'll be able to, I don't know if I'll use much of it. Wow, this is a very juicy lime. That was half an ounce. That was great. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Put it in there. Excellent. Very, very easy. I love it when things are that easy. Love that. Trash it. Uh, not trash it. Compost it. I, I, and there's a service here in Philadelphia that I know that I can get a compost bin. And now that I, now that I have the opportunity to, and I see, it's. I love this apartment so much more than the other one. You know, my, my previous landlord. They called me up the other day and they were like, hey, what internet did you use? And I was like, I used Comcast. They're like, would you recommend Comcast? And I was like, mm, no, no, I would not. I would definitely not recommend Comcast, not to anybody, unless you hate yourself, in which case, yeah, use Comcast. If you like long wait times and in uh, inoperable service that comes in and out whenever it pleases to, use Comcast. And if you wanna work for Comcast, nobody will talk to you. They will leave you in your corner and expect you to do your thing, but then never tell you what your thing is. Um, it was an experience. It was a it was a growing experience for me, and I worked there for like over a year. It was wild. I have this lime. Do I need that for later? Does this get garnished? Oh my god, this drink doesn't get garnished. All right, well this lime's gonna go back in the refrigerator. I'm gonna put a little. The way that I usually preserve citrus and stuff. I don't know if it's the perfect. I don't know if it's the right way to do it, but I take a paper towel. I put it that way down, I just kind of wrap it up and I put it in the door. And it usually keep, it keeps for a very long time. The, the actual flesh of the fruit will kind of get a little, it'll get a little bit, it'll get a little hard and sometimes it'll start molding, but that'll just happen if you keep it in the fridge for a prolonged period of time anyway. But behind the oxidized hard part of the inside of the citrus flesh, it actually stays pretty good and it's still very, very juicy and you can squeeze it very well. I've had limes that have sat for a very long time. The skin gets really, really hard. You can't use it for like peels or wheels or um, wedges and stuff like that, but you can still use it for lime juice and it still tastes really, really good. It's probably not the best, but it's still technically fresh, right? Maybe, some would say. The next ingredient that we need is half an ounce of grapefruit juice. And luckily, I, um, I was meaning to do a completely different cocktail, I think two weeks ago, so I bought a couple grapefruits and I still have them, so. Grapefruit, 
that's what I got. And I'm gonna need to take the uh, the orange juice back out again after I cut this cut this doodad open. I really don't need a lot of grapefruit juice. I don't. But grapefruits are large, so that's what we gotta go with. Big old grapefruit. Big old grapefruit. I love grapefruit. I like it's such a it's it's unique. I love grapefruit, and I'm happy. I'm happy that I have it here. I have a small little container down here that I'm gonna use to put the orange juice in. There's not a lot of orange juice, um, but I'm gonna put it in this orange container, which looks like it used to contain medication. It does not contain medication anymore, I promise. So uh, let's put whatever we have in there to make room for some grapefruit juice. There we go. It's orange, that's how I remember that it's orange juice. That's, that's how we do it around here. I'm gonna put that in there, right? Yeah, that totally fits. I'm just gonna do like a, I'll just do a quick, a little bit of water in there, a little wipe down with, uh, with some paper towels that I got over here, just to keep it clean. I don't have, I don't have a proper like, uh, I don't know if a, like if uh, a grapefruit juicer is a thing specifically, citrus juicer, whatever it may be. I don't exactly know. Um, but if it exists, I don't own it. I have a knife and a citrus juicer, and damn, that's what I'm gonna use. And if there's anything left over, like a little bit of orange, that's fine. It's just a, it's a little pizzazz. We've already kind of gone off the walls with this drink just a little bit. So we'll keep it that way. We like to keep things spicy around here. I don't need a lot of it. So I'm not going to use the big grapefruit side. I'll use the small grapefruit side. And I'll conserve the rest of it. We need only half an ounce? Half an ounce of grapefruit juice. That's all we really need. So uh, I think honestly just squeezing this with my hands would probably do the job too. But I've got this thing here to help me out. So uh, I'm going to use it. I'm gonna use it while I got it. That is definitely more than enough grapefruit juice. That is so easy. So easy to do. Wow. And there's a lot of grapefruit juice too. Lovely. Thank you, grapefruit juice. Or oh, thank you, grapefruit, for your juice. We appreciate that. And we need half an ounce or about 15 milliliters. So uh, hopefully I can get all that into, it's like leaking at the sides. I don't like that. I've never had a problem with this thing before, and now it's just coming out like crazy. It's like all over the place. Jeez. Ugh. Contain yourself, container. Jeez. Please. All right, well, put that in the ground. Or uh, maybe I just juice the entire grapefruit. Eh, screw it. I'm going to juice the entire grapefruit, and then I'm going I'm to put all the juice in another container I have. Because, um... I'm not gonna use the rest of the grapefruit. I will probably have a chance to use the rest of the grapefruit as a form of juice, but other than that, like I'm gonna forget that it's in my refrigerator because it's not directly in front of me. Uh, Cause that's just the kind of person I am. I wind up missing things that are not directly in front of my face. And even when they are directly in front of my face, I still miss them sometimes. I'm just that kind of individual. And like, I wanna say that I'm proud of it, but I'm still developing coping mechanisms to say that I'm okay with it and not trying to optimize it out as a part of the grand scheme of my personality, which I don't think exists yet. I don't know. I'll be talking to people. I got, I got issues to work out, but everybody's got their fair share of issues. And that's okay, and it's totally cool to admit it too. All right, that's, that's a very, very juicy grapefruit. There we go. Great, that is all the juice. It's all the juice. There's no more juice. I will be cleaning that up later. I don't need that anymore. Put that on top of my uh, paper towel. And I will put this into a container. I have another container back here. This is gonna be my grapefruit juice container. That way, it'll be fresh next time too. There we go, grapefruit juice. It's grapefruit juice. I don't have any other comments about it. It's just grapefruit juice. I'll put that on my fridge and we'll get to it another time. It might be useful some other time. I said that already. Yeah, totally. Clean up a little bit, make space for more stuff. All right, let's get back to it. We put, I'm pretty sure we put the half an ounce of grapefruit juice in there already. And I really hope I did. And now the next thing we need is two dashes of aromatic bitters. Now, I used the Feeman Brothers old fashioned bitters in this cocktail. I'm inclined to keep with it because it's new and exciting and I like new and exciting things. But what I want to do instead is I'm actually going to use Peshad's bitters this time because I want to change things up a little bit. I feel like my first experience with Peshad's bitters was that I thought it tasted like and smelled like... Where are my bitters? Where are my Peshad's? Oh, there you are. Back there. 
I found it. My first experience with Peshawd's bitters was that I thought it tasted and smelled like a wet dog. And I don't think I necessarily feel the same way these days. I'd say that it smells kind of like a damp carpet nowadays, but like in a good way. When I was a small child, here's a little tidbit about my my, hist my personal history here. When I was a very, very, very young boy, I used to go into the office room at my parents' house and I would eat the carpet. I would bite the side of my bed because it had a fabric covered metal rod that would protect me from falling off because I was on the top bunk. When I was young, I'd be on the, on the bus to go to school and I decided that the seat belts just tasted wonderful. I don't know why, but young me had a certain fan like like uh um young me had an attraction of sorts a a mouth attraction to things that were fabric and i don't know why i definitely distinctly remember myself picking off the pieces of like a piece of clothing and like just eating it oh it was the side of the rug it was the side of the rug in the office and back at my parents house we all have weird times. We all come from very strange backgrounds. No matter how normal you think your background was, you've definitely done some weird shit, and why not embrace it? Two dashes of aromatic bitters. I'm using Pashad's because it reminds me of carpets. <laughs> and, and I think the dragon's bite could use some carpet, I suppose. I don't know enough about, if I were a more, let's say, analytical individual, a little more of a, uh, an experienced individual, I'd probably give you all the different reasons of why Peshawd's Bitters is the way to go. It tastes like this, it's got cherry notes, it's red, it's beautiful, but it reminds me of carpets, and I'm gonna keep with that. And that's all you need in the Dragon's Bite. You need various different types of rum, absinthe, cinnamon syrup, or otherwise, falernum, which is a special rummy thing, so just add more rum to it, lime juice, grapefruit juice, and some aromatic bitters. You're gonna, st we're gonna put that into our cocktail shaker here over crushed ice, um, and then we're gonna put it into a regular glass, put a big old ice cube in it, put some more crushed ice on top of it, and then that's where we're gonna, that's, that's, we're on turn two. Then we move on to turn three, which is a short one. It's gonna be a short turn, a uh, short term, I, I promise. I'm gonna put my ice away too. I don't need that anymore. All right, so I'm gonna need some crushed ice. And so what I'm going to do is I need quite a bit of crushed ice. I don't exactly know how much. So I'm gonna put things off to the side. I'm gonna prepare, prepare for this. I don't have a crushed ice machine. I don't have any apparatus that is to make the crushed ice for me. Instead, I have my right hand, my forearms, and a very large tool made of metal that I'm going to use to create crushed ice. I'm going to crush the ice for you because because I have to, because that's all I have here. So I'm gonna take some cheesecloth. I got cheesecloth. Um, I have this piece of rubbery silicone thing here to protect my bar from the force of a wrench yes i said a wrench i was not kidding uh remember that anytime that you're using any sort of heavy hardware you should protect yourself i for one have these goggles to protect my eyes from any sort of flying chips of ice and stuff and um i utilize i actually create the crust ice um by using this wrench here it's been cleaned multiple times it looks like it's a little tarnished it's not it's just your eyes and that's where I'm going to leave that. Let's grab a couple of ice cubes. I'll grab some of the big ones so it's satisfying. I think I have, I have three left in this container here, so I'm going to use two of them. Hello. Whoa, don't slip, uh, don't slip, please. I need you. I need you for later. There we go. Another one. That's probably all we need. Great. Great gadzooks. I'm going to move my microphone away for a moment because I'm about to hit my bar. If you are afraid of loud noises, if you are scared by loud noises, please. Take the headphones off, lower the volume a little bit, or turn off the stream. You don't need to be here. Nobody is forcing you to. However, if you do like loud noises and a man screaming to himself in like aggressive rage, then please stick around. This will be fun. This one is for the anger that I experienced today when I rode into work and realized that my bike was broken and then rode my broken bike all the way back home to the bike shop, to which they said, oh, that thing looks broken. How? You just fixed it. Well, somebody fixed it wrong, and now I think I need to buy a new bike. Ugh. Annoying. You can crush it up good if you want it. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Cameron, and I just took out my anger. 
Remember, externalize. It's good for you. Externalization is good. Well, now I have a small nutsack looking bag of a crushed ice. Uh, I'm going to utilize it. I wouldn't just let this nutsack go to waste. I don't nutsack. It's a nice sack. Ice sack. Ice sack. I sack, you sack, we all sack. Anyways. Now that you have your crushed ice, we're gonna put it inside of a cocktail shaker. I'm gonna shake the cocktail itself, the actual reagents, over top of the crushed ice. I don't I don't usually shake over crushed ice. I've just never been told to, but this time I'm explicitly being told to shake over crushed ice, so I'm going to shake it over crushed ice. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't have a means to scoop it in there, so I'm just gonna like I don't know, do I use my hands? Yeah, I'm gonna just use my hands. I got these hands. These hands were made for grabbing. And grabbing's just what they'll do. Today on stream, Cameron grabs things and regrets it. There we go. And I'll use the rest of the crushed ice for um, the actual drink itself in a little bit. This is, or will be, the Dragon's Bite. I'm gonna pour it in there. I don't need the rest of this glass. I don't need this equals glass anymore. Mwah. Champions, for those who like sports, or sportsy kind of peoples. I, I'm actually a part of a fantasy football league this year. My people at work coerced me into doing it. It's week four now. Apparently this stuff lasts for six months. I didn't know that. I did not know what I was getting myself into. In any case, let's see, let's see how many seconds we're going to shake this for. But the roll of the d20, it is nine seconds. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten for good luck. Just like last time. I probably could have grabbed another D twenty too. Eh, it's fine. It's fine. Eee, come on, get off of there. That is a very okie dokie. It seems that my this is why I don't like to use this particular container. It comes apart. It looks pretty, but that's all it does. It just looks that way. It doesn't function that way. Now what we need to do is strain it over some actual ice. Um, the cocktail book has like a tall-ish glass for this, but I really don't think that it's gonna, I don't know if it needs a tall glass because I'm afraid that it's not gonna be as tall, it's not gonna be as much volume as I want it to be. But I think I'm gonna make it work. It's gonna be a tall glass that's kind of thick at the bottom, so I'm gonna put two large ice cubes in it, I'm gonna fill it up, and then I'm gonna put more crushed ice on top of it. That's gonna be the plan. Actually, what I think I'll do is, mm, Hmm. What kind of glass do I want to use? I don't really know. I don't really know. Who thinks of a dragon bite? Ugh, I hate being stuck with indecision. I'm just gonna go for the first glass that I can think of. This one. It's plain, it's cool. And it looks like that. And I'll put some I'm gonna put some ice cubes in it. I think I have some I could put some tall some big ice cubes in there. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to shave them down though if I do that. But uh that's fine. That's okay. I got um, thick ice cubes. I had some uh, I had some pal or pals over the other day and they were like man, or I think it was it was my pals or it was somebody else somebody somebody was saying those are some pretty large ice cubes where did you get those and I was like well you just kind of put them in a container and put a, put enough water in a large voluminous container and um, you get large ice that's just how it, that's just how it goes oh I remember I remember who I was talking to now uh, they had also asked about whether I've ever made like clear ice using the water cooler method or the water cooler. Um, the ice, the, the cooler method, method, and I have not. Uh, I have a cooler though. Previously, I kept all of my ingredients in a cooler. I don't have to anymore. Oh, come on now. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Just meander your way down. You got it. If I just warm, if I warm up the glass a little bit, the ice will eventually melt just a tad and make its way to the bottom of the glass. <sighs> or I can breathe on it, I guess, which is disgusting now that I think about it. I'll also carve up another ice cube. I need to refill this one up now. Uh, which I can actually do because I have water here, but I'm not gonna do that now. I'll do that after the fact. I don't want to bore everybody watching ice freeze. That's boring. Or maybe it's not. Maybe maybe we like to see that. Maybe that's the kind of con content that we're into. I don't really know. The marketplace of entertainment is always evolving. I'm just shaving off this other big ice cube back here so that it fits in the glass. Hopefully a little easier than the first one. I don't know the proper way to shave ice either, um, so I use a knife. That's just what I have. That's what I'm gonna use. All right, you got it, right? Yeah, well, let me flip you over. Cut out this corner, and that corner, and that corner. There's definitely a better way to do this. These are the origins of the famous flair bartender. 
can't remember the next. This is the, or this is the origin story. This is when he's learning. This is when he's learning about things. I am learning nothing. Just kidding. I'm learning a lot. We are always learning every single day, and that's that's a very good thing. Now, eventually, that'll probably make its way down to the bottom of the glass. Um, I'm kind of impatient. I don't know what the best way to do this is. I'm gonna like rub this out of this glass to warm it up. I don't know if that's working or not. Come on, you got it. You got it. Oh, come on, you're so good. Okay, well, I tried my best. There's definitely a better way to do this. Maybe I just like. If I rub the ice away from the knife, I say. Rub the ice away from the knife. Yes, that's a, it's a very good, it's an analogy, you see. It's an analogy for keeping your body away from things that might harm it. There we go, that was close. That was close. The ice cube broke, and it's sliding down. Perfect, I am satisfied with where that turned out. And I'm gonna put my knife away so I don't hurt anybody. I'm the only person here, Anna's downstairs. She's working on stuff. Like a studious per like the studious person she is, I almost completely dumped over everything that was in the cocktail container, and uh, that's that's not that's not what I'm all about tonight. So now what we need to do is strain it over, and then like just drink it. Oh wait, I remember now. I remember now. I remember now. Oh my god, I remember now. And there was another part to this drink that I almost forgot about. Not the ice coming apart from each other. If you have the correct glass, the correct ice, then you can put if you have them. Multicolored ice cubes, and I have at least one around here somewhere. Here we go. It was by my foot. I bought these on Amazon. The brand is Light Cubes. Light spelled L-I-T-E because people like to simplify things. Um, there's a button on the bottom that you click. It turns a color. You can click it again. It'll turn off. You can click it again, and it just, it just kind of cycles through. I want the color red. Do you have the color red? Do you have the... That's, that's disco color. That's not what I want. The color red. This is a red ice cube. You can tell that it's red only when I turn the lights off. Which my, fing my finger was not registering on my, my phone here. I thought it was going to be a lot cooler than that. Let's try that again. <clears throat> when you turn the lights off, it's red. Look, it's a, it's a red ice cube. Isn't that cool? Wasn't that so cool? Oh my god. I'm going to put that right in the middle. It's at the heart of the dragon. And then I'll put another ice cube on top of it. Just like, that's kind of what it looks like in the book. Kind of looks like that in the book. So that's what I'm trying to go for. Um, the biblical accuracy. That's what it's all about. Now there's like a lot of... This ice is slowly but surely making its way to the bottom. It will eventually make it there. Hopefully I, wind up, I don't wind up making a mess. So uh, let's do it. Let's get it a little closer. Let's put this on a yoga block and see how it looks. be kind of cool to see how it looks in the dark too so i'm most definitely going to try that what's the best angle this looks like a pretty good angle i think i need the other yoga block for this to take it off the ground you work with what you have this is what i got oh that's actually too high oh that's so annoying all right well that's what we're gonna go with that's the cocktail that's where it's gonna go now let's strain it on top of it i have another strainer for this a good one not the one that the um the strainer came with because I don't don't like shitty strainers and it's a shitty strainer let's do that it's probably gonna come out dark we'll see very carefully over the top so i don't spill it anywhere there we go that's working great and it might actually melt the ice cubes a little bit as it makes its way down hopefully there's enough liquid is there enough liquid there is definitely enough liquid the dragon's heart is being covered there might not have been actually enough liquid in there it's fine. We can also cover it with more crushed ice. I do have more crushed ice. That looks pretty good, actually, though. Although the ice cubes are very, very big, it still looks kind of cool. It's like fire volcano or something like that. Any more liquid in there? Here we do it a little. Whatever's left. You got it. You got it. You don't. Literally nothing else came out of there. I pushed it too hard. Now, I wonder what this cocktail looks like. Is that that's all we're getting there? Yeah, that's all we're getting there. How does it look in the dark? Fire. The dragon's bite. Oh my god, my yoga block almost moved around. The dragon's bite, ladies and gentlemen. And those who fall in between or beyond. It looks kind of cool. I'm going to take a photo. Nice. It's got a nice fiery color to it. I like that. Oh, I should turn the lights back on. Otherwise, we'll be in the dark forever. I'm going to zoom in as we do so. Oh, that's my camera app. There we go. We're not optimized around here. 
There we go. We're back. Welcome back. <laughs> that was the cocktail. Dragon's Bite. Oh, that's still too far. We're still working on things around here. And probably forever will be. So this was the Dragon's Bite. The Dragon's Bite contained the following ingredients in the following order. One ounce or 30 milliliters of blackstrap rum. I used the closest thing I had. It was Myers. Three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of gold rum. Mount Gay is pretty gold, so I use that one. Three quarters of an ounce of a Demerara 151 overproof rum. I don't have a Demerara rum, so I used the only overproof one that I had, and that was Gosling's 151. Six drops of absinthe. It was Viu Viu Carré. I don't speak that language, so I don't pronounce the language very well. It's probably French or something. Half an ounce of cinnamon syrup. I forgot my cinnamon syrup, so instead I used a little, a little bit of Goldschläger and some, uh, and some burnt sugar oak molasses syrup by a company called Yes Cocktail Company that I picked up at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. There's also half an ounce of falernum in there of unknown origin. I It's been in my collection since April of last year and it's alcohol so it doesn't really go bad. It's got some stuff in there. Half an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of grapefruit juice, both of them 15 milliliters, and fresh, freshly made. And two dashes of an aromatic bitters of your choice. I used Peshad's because it reminds me of a carpet. Um, and don't question why I made that decision. It's got a lot to do with my upbringing. It's got a lot to do with um, every single decision that I've ever made leading me to this point here. And I'm very proud of it. This is the Dragon's Bite. And uh, I don't think the Dragon Bite needs a straw. I'll take a big old bite at it with my teeth. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Okay. Wow, that is on top. That's really cool. So, there is something really cool going on here. It's very, very rum forward. It's a very rum forward drink. It reminds me a lot of various different tiki cocktails that I've had in the past, like your rum crusta or your mai tai it's got that it's got that tropicalness for it in the way that like you know the other cocktails that would use like rum agricole or falernum or various other like tiki ingredients like orjo or however you pronounce it it's got that kind of feeling to it and it really comes that's the first thing that i get and honestly i'm not super duper experienced so i can't it's hard for me to kind of get past that but i'm gonna try there are some other like really really cool things happening there and honestly i can't pick out exactly where it's coming from i'm getting the spices from the falernum i'm getting the uh, i'm guessing the smoky uh, the smokiness the, the smoky sweetness that's probably coming from that syrup that i used the cinnamony the cinnamonness of the goldschläger is lost i think it's it's kind of gone it's definitely gotten mixed up in whatever was coming from the uh, falernum there and then of course there's just like all the different rum notes going on there the fact that like you combine so many different rums together for a bunch of these different like tropical drinks and stuff is something that i don't quite understand yet the reason for like i get it when you use one one particular type of base spirit but it's so interesting to think that these other base spirits which are of the same base sugar in this case can come together in a very particular way to make a particular flavor that just like evokes a particular like aesthetic in this case it's that tiki tropical aesthetic which fits this reminds me of a volcano although it's supposed to be dragon themed but it's very it very much reminds me of other tiki drinks that i've had in the past and of the tiki drinks that i've made they come from i gotta find the book because i've only made, I've made a few from this book called a lot of books back here i got them from this tiki cocktails book this this cocktail is not from the tiki cocktails book but it reminds me of the cocktails that i have created uh that i got recipes from that particular book and that's by weston and sharp the tiki the tiki book there i'd recommend it i don't know where i found i think i found that in just some random store in disney world i think in disney springs i think that's where i got it that's wonderful i really like that that's like it's not a oh actually oh my god okay i just got another i just got another flavor note there it was i took a pretty big gulp and i probably wasn't prepared for it but back here i'm getting this really really strong vanilla note it's like a really really strong vanilla but it's not just vanilla it's vanilla and like a little bit of uh, what you would describe as like minty so like an effervescence maybe it's like an I, that might be the wrong word to use but it's almost like vanilla and mint it's like vanilla mint i think vanilla mint is a thing it tastes like vanilla mint back there which is not something that i was expecting at all where would that i wonder if that's coming from the um the syrup that i put in there 
Or maybe it's coming from one of the rums. I don't really know. It's it's really, really cool. I was not expecting that flavor to pop up in the back. Wow. Wow, that's really, really cool. I was not expecting that at all. Wow, there was an unexpected evolution that happened there. That is really, really cool. Wow. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm like, now that I'm sitting here, now that I'm living in it, now I'm really, really enjoying. I get, I get the spices there. I get that vanilla mint note there. I'm getting the tropical tiki note there. That is like, dude, that deserves an umbrella. Oh, it says no garnish, but can't have a tiki drink without a nice little umbrella. I got a cool little orange one here, and it's been completely inverted. Hell yeah! Oh yes! Oh, that's really, really tasty. Mmm. Okay, okay. This is in no means something that you should be chugging. You will miss the experience. You will miss the evolutionary landslide that's happening here. You will miss the bite of the dragon. I really like that. Wow, I really, really like that. That's great. That's a... I've been completely turned around. That's a, that's a nine. That is a freaking nine. I love that. Anna would not like that drink at all, but I am totally in love with this. Wow! I can't believe how I can be completely turned around by that. That was great. I love the dragon's bite, and it looks cool. It's got a glowing ice cube in it. These ice cubes come in different colors too, but that's for another time if I ever need to use them. That was wonderful. Wow. All right. It's so nice to still have my youth about me. I can like unexpectedly be surprised at the most mundane or unexpected thing because I'm very easy to surprise. And that's just, anybody would look at me and be like, well, that's because he's young. He's still got his youth about him. You're damn right I do. And this is wonderful. That's so great. Wow, I love that. All right, so we've covered two cocktails tonight in total. The Methavian, which is kind of a margar it's kind of a riff on a margarita with a little bit of Sazerac going on there with in terms of, I guess it's really just the absinthe that, that happens there. Um, but this one's got some absinthe in it too. It's got six drops of absinthe. Kind of lost. Maybe it's working in there. It's probably attributing to the vanilla mint thing, maybe. I don't really know. And we also created the Dragon's Bite, which is kind of a, it's a tropical kind of thing going on there. I don't know what other way to describe it. It's tropical, it's vanilla, vanilla minty, it's spice e, not spicy, as in, ah, my tongue, spice e, like cloves, allspice, cinnamon, sugar and molasses, and it's a, there's a wonderful thing going on there. Oh, and I have a bunch of other crust ice. Um, let's put let's put some crushed ice in this. It's it's tiki. Let's put some more crushed ice in it. Go go ahead. You got it. Yeah, more crushed ice. Yeah, you got it. Uh, I have very large ice cubes in there. That really wasn't going to work the way that I wanted it to. That's fine. That's fine. Anyways, yeah, don't need that. There we go. I will clean that up later. Those are the two cocktails that we had tonight. And in terms of our marching order, we're done with marching order number one. Marching at our number two, we're going on to turn number three. It's short and it's sweet. It's just going to be a shot. I'm just going to take a shot because I decided I wanted to put myself in the marching order too because it's a D&D &D theme thing. There's, it's from a book called Mystic Libations, which was graciously created by Brandon Clayla and Todd Stashwick. I picked it up at a board game convention and I'm so happy that I did. The illustrations are beautiful. It's got a class in the back, an, an additional bard class called the Class of Arcane Mix. Mixology. I don't even need my reference. It's got a couple of different maps in the back. If you are a DM who likes cocktails, I would recommend this book. I'm not yet a DM, but I'm a dude who likes cocktails, and maybe I'll DM someday. I would highly, highly recommend it. I will put, uh, naturally, what comes out after these videos is a YouTube video. There's stuff that pops up on Instagram and stuff. I'm trying to get my TikTok stuff going, although there's been nothing posted that was cocktail-related yet, but I'm working on it, so I'm, I'm trying. It'll all be, it'll all show up in those various locations if you're interested in that kind of stuff. I, I find it difficult to be able to pop different links in chat right now for the, Twitchy, tw for the Twitchers out there, so I sincerely apologize, but bear with me. Your patience is greatly appreciated. So I'm gonna put the book over here on display. And um, the last thing that we're gonna do is just in the spirit of D and D and stuff. I'm just gonna I'm gonna roll a d20 and see based off of my d20 roll what kind of shot that I get to take at the end of this because that's that's what we do when it's a Wednesday night and you've played D and D and you've drank in with your friends and you've enjoyed the company that you surround yourself with. What do you do next? Well, you end your night with one small nightcap, a shot, a shot in this case. Such a good drink. Oh my god. So let's see, I will roll for 
luck, I suppose. If it's a one, it's going to be something disgusting, and I'm really hoping it's not something disgusting, but I will do it if it's what the fates have decided for me. And if it's a 20, then I'll probably just take, I'll, I'll probably just take a big swig of one of my drinks and then call it there. We'll see how it goes. The gods forever favor me. It is in between. It was actually, it's on its side because I did not roll it on my table. I rolled it on my little mat here. Oh my god, you're kidding me. It is actually a one. I actually did roll a one. I am not even I'm not even joking there. I did roll a one. I'm not happy with that. I was really, really hoping. Everything worked out perfect for this particular cocktail stream. The two cocktails came first, the shot came last, the drinks were good. And I roll a one at the very end. And I said I would do an egg. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Ah. Oh. oh my god, I hate that. Ew, that's nasty. But I hold myself to it. That's what I do. Well, I have an egg up here. What's the best way to serve an egg? Mm. God, I don't like that. But I am a man of my word. What's the best way to serve an egg? I'm gonna Google that. I know pearl oysters are a thing. I can make it into a sour. That's also a thing. But if you put it into a sour, that doesn't seem very that doesn't seem very klutz-like. How to serve an egg raw? I'm nervous now. How to eat raw eggs safely? How do you do that? What's the best way to eat raw eggs? Cracking an egg into a cup and drinking it is low risk, but cracking an egg into a cup, dropping some shell in it, picking the shell out with your fingers, and drinking it after two hours on the bench is a high risk. What is that description? I don't understand that. Okay, I have some, you know what? I have some grapefruit juice that I have still in my fridge. So that's what I'm going to do, because usually you can do it with orange juice. People have cracked eggs into orange juice and survived. So that's what I'm going to do. For the various, for the for everybody watching right now, I'm a man of my word, and I rolled a one. So that's how we're going to do it. Thanks, y'all. That's how we do it. It wouldn't be the first egg that I've consumed raw, to be perfectly honest. It would not be the first. I took a trip up to Maryland one time with a couple of my fraternity brothers, and we decided to start the day with various different drinks. Um, I, it was a beer and an egg. I don't remember what you call those things, um, but... It was a thing. I love everybody out there. I thank you all for coming for this beautiful stream. This is going to be the last thing I do, and then then we're done. And that's it. And then I'm ending the stream there, because I do not want to ex let the world experience whatever comes after this. So thank you, everybody, so much. We're going to go to the end screen now. That's what we're going to do. We're going to the end screen. Um, I rolled a one. That means I consume an egg. So to everybody out there, no matter where you are, where the sun is shining where you are, where the moon is up where you are, I don't care what time zone that you are in, you are not, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. You have a wonderful day or a wonderful night. And I hope to goodness that I'm the one suffering the most tonight and you are not. Thank you, everybody. Oh my goodness. For the record, I did do it. There was no mess. It's fine. Have a good one, guys. Bye.